you, sir. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> We've lost control. Let's throw it to Rocky Top. Gamecock to the Ohio State right Passion Running <laughs> Oh, my goodness. We're only a few hundred miles north of where Bill Murray is, which for him, about a 9 iron. <laughs> watching the SEC on ESPN. ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. All right, back to business. The SEC East yeah. wide open as we hit the midway point of the season. 100,000 plus yeah, yeah, at yeah, Neyland yeah. Stadium today. Yeah. Hoping Tennessee can damage South Carolina's hopes of a division title. And with Georgia's loss last week, the Gamecocks' chances greatly improve. They enter today's game 3-1 and one in conference play, having won four straight overall. All eyes will be on Jadavian Clowney, reigning SEC Defensive Player of the Year, but he'll have to deal with a very good Tennessee offensive line, and rabid fans here want to see him fail. South Carolina won the toss and deferred, so Tennessee will get the football. Devron Young had surgery on his broken hand in early September, but is a good returner, is back healthy, and he's the deep man. Bernard, who's had some trouble on kickoffs, keeping them inbounds, will boot it away. It's football time! And right on cue, out of bounds, penalty play. Well, this was a great matchup last year. It featured Antonio Richardson, a left tackle against Jadavian Clowney. Clowney beat Richardson on one of the key plays of the game to force a fumble. And to preserve the win, Richardson remembers this is going to be a matchup to watch today. Now that was right before the game, and that was a huge play. Tennessee had a chance to win that game on that play, and Richardson played very well throughout that game, but he remembers that last play he gave up. He's called this a personal vendetta for three, 365 days from last year. <laughs> we'll see how he plays emotionally this, this game. And they start with good field position because of the kickoff out of bounds on the Tennessee 35-yard line. Here's the quarterback, Justin Worley, and a blitz coming. And it's Neal, and he'll lose yardage on the screen pass. Clowney made the tackle. It was interesting. They, coaches had to even sit Richardson down this week just to remind him, hey, this isn't personal. It's, it's team against Clowney. It's not you versus Clowney. And on that play we just showed you from last year, Richardson said it was my bad. I made it personal because that the, the protection was designed to come my way, and I made the mistake. Here's Clowney again. Taking down Peg Howard. So he's made two plays already. Another loss on the play. That one about six yards. Well, they try to block him with the tight end, Brendan Downs, and he just whiffs. For my money, I'm going to have my best player, which is Antonio Richardson, blocking their best player. I'm not going to have my tight end try to block him second play of the game. No chance. And look out here on third down and 18, coming off the edge, number seven. Big Howard in motion. They block Clowney here, but the pass is high downfield and incomplete, intended for Marquez North. Ahmad Christian on the coverage, so Tennessee, after starting with decent field position because of the kickoff out of bounds, goes three and out. And we talked with head coach Butch Jones last night, and he said the most important thing in this game offensively for us is to not come out and have three and outs. We have to have some sustained drives in this game to protect our defense. If it's a very good South Carolina offense, and first drive, they come out three and out. Now, Pilardi, who handles all the kicking duties for Tennessee, will punt. True freshman Farrell Cooper is back for the Gamecocks. And Cooper unwisely let it bounce. And this will end up around the eight-yard line. Well done by Pilardi. 65-yard punt. Well, South Carolina, 11th in the AP poll and Connor Shaw a big reason why he has not thrown an interception this season and as a starter over the course of his career he is 22 and 4 now two wins shy of tying the school record for wins by QB and one of the biggest compliments that you can have as a quarterback is when your head coach describes you as being efficient and that's what Steve Spurrier the word that he uses to describe Connor Shaw 
protecting the football, making plays. He's been outstanding this year. He'll hand it off here to Mike Davis, and he'll lose yardage. Loss of one on the play. Cameron Sutton is there for Tennessee. Impact players are brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Here's Tom Luganville. Well, for South Carolina, it's running back Mike Davis. Exceptional yards after contact as he's going to match up between the tackles with A.J. Johnson, the Tennessee linebacker. They cannot afford post-contact yardage to get to the second level for Tennessee on defense today. Davis lost two yards on first down. He comes in leading the conference in rushing. Now Shaw will throw it from his end zone. Trying to create... A run and run. He gets outside and then throws it away. Daniel Hood eventually forced him out, so it'll bring up third down and 12. Great coverage downfield from Tennessee. This is a secondary that has given up some big plays. They're young on the back end, starting some true freshmen in the nickel and dime situations. That's Cam Sutton, number 23. But nice job on second and long there, forcing the scramble. Kind of shot. How about this is the sixth total play in this game. We have yet to have a positive play. Incompletion there, but the previous plays were all negative yardage. Third and 12 for Shaw out of an empty set. And Shaw will take off in the quarterback draw. And brought down by A.J. Johnson, short of the first down marker by about three yards. So the Gamecocks will punt. That's a big stop for Tennessee defensively, just to give them some confidence. This is an explosive offense for South Carolina, but to come in, stop Mike Davis in a negative play, have good coverage on second and third down, and force a punt. Great start for Tennessee defensively. Tyler Hall will kick it to Jacob Carter, and Tennessee should get good field position again. It's a short punt, and the fair catch made at the 46. Jadavian Clowney came into this game on the season, only three tackles for a loss. He's got two more. It happened on the first series. Get everything you need to prep your lawn this fall, like a Husqvarna backpack blower for just $249 at Lowe's. This is a map of the pressure points on my feet. I had flat feet. I learned where the stress was at the Dr. Schultz Foot Mapping Center. Then I got my number, which matched the custom fit orthotic inserts with the right support. Find your closest foot mapping center at drscholes.com. I'm a believer. Get red strawberry ale. Just what I was thinking. Fresh like a strawberry, brewed like an ale. New red strawberry ale. More room in Economy Plus. More comfort. More of what you need. That's built around you, friendly. There will be more powerful storms. That's why there's new Duracell Quantum. Only Duracell Quantum has a high-density core. And that means more fuel, more power, more performance than the next leading brand. New Duracell Quantum. Trusted everywhere. Starting now, guys. Night. AT&T knows you don't want anything to come between you and your new iPhone. That's why we're offering AT&T Next at zero down on all new iPhones.
Welcome back to Knoxville. Last year in this game was a colossal matchup between Antonio Richardson, Jadavian Clowney. And the thing that stood out to me was Tony Richardson's patience and footwork. Take a look here. He's in good position, rides Jadavian Clowney past the quarterback. He did that on a consistent basis in that game. But at the end of the game, he fell asleep one time and lost his patience. He went for the move and he lunged. His footwork was off. And he gave up the swim move to Clowney, which ended up being the play of the game that saved the game for South Carolina all, all offseason. Tiny Richards has been, been thinking about that. In this game, we talked to him yesterday, the key for him is to be patient and not lunge at those moves. Here's Neal on the carry, bounces off a defender and picks up about five yards. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, Tom Lugan, Bill, and, and Brian, what about from Clowney's perspective? Looks already like he's got something to prove. Uh, you know that he wants to play well against Richardson. Absolutely today. has something to prove. Richardson got the best of him last year in this game, and he just got one play at the end. And But to me, Clowney's the guy that has to prove himself in this situation. Clowney still is battling that muscle strain from his rib cage, which, which kept him out of the Kentucky game. Neal powering to the 47 yard line so only a couple there it'll bring up third down. Clowney was back last week South Carolina hammered Arkansas 52 to 7 and the most complete game the game Cox have played this year their resume just improved last night with UCF a team that South Carolina beat on the road knocking off previously undefeated Louisville. Worley. Rolling to his left, being chased, and Big Howard able to hang on to it for a first down, and a penalty flag comes in. That's just a playmaker there from Worley. He gets to the outside, and he throws this ball before Pig Howard even turns around. Good thing he did. That ball could have been intercepted, yeah. but that's just making a play, obviously a broken play. And at the end, did they get a helmet-to-helmet contact helmet Yeah, contact I think you here? may have targeting here. Look at the blow delivered by Kaditrix Marcus, and the penalty flag was thrown, and Marcus wow. was visibly upset when he saw the official signal. Well, that's a big, if it is, that would be a huge penalty because Chaz Elder, their starting safety, is already out of this game. And if Kaditrix Marcus is thrown out of this game, they're very thin at safety already. Here's the call from Mark Curls. Personal foul. Targeting the Chris's player, number 25 defense, is disqualified. The 50 yard throw is added to the end of the line. The previous play is under further review. So they will look at it. It's going to be a 15 yard penalty no matter what. Now, replay can overturn the call on the field, meaning that Marcus would not be ejected. If the ruling is upheld. Marcus is gone for the game. If it's overturned, then he can come back, but the penalty would still stand. Well, this this isn't as violent a hit as we have seen in, in recent weeks, but it's still by definition and by rule, this is targeting. When the helmet hits his helmet right there, you see that's a pretty cut and dry situation. Right. And that's just bad technique by Marcus there. It wasn't that I think he was trying to hurt somebody. He just can't put your helmet on his helmet. He led with the crown, and he also hit above the shoulders. So that'll put the ball at the 21-yard line, regardless of whether the ejection is overturned. And it's been about 25% of the time here through the first two months of the season where the ruling on the field has been overturned and the player has been allowed to stay in the game. You mentioned Elder is out already with the concussion and they've had problems in the secondary you had three guys that were benched last week right. in the Arkansas game. Well now the onus falls on T.J. Gurley uh, and Bryson Williams who are really the only two safeties that they have that have played at all this season. This is a, uh, a huge loss because yep. I think Spurrier. you're right it, it's going to be upheld because it, that is the definition of targeting right there. It's a good call by the official. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. There you go. So he's gone. And again, I don't think that it was Kadetrick Marcus's intent to, to hurt anybody. It's just bad technique. And this is what young players throughout college football are going to have to continue to learn. And coaches need to coach better. Give Pig Howard credit, too, after... 
Getting hammered by Marcus, able to hold on to the ball. Neal on first down, finds a hole and gets inside the 20 for about three yards. Back to the strategy of this game. This is a great opportunity for Tennessee offensively to take advantage of that call with a first down inside, just outside the 20 yard line. They have got to be able to establish the run in this game against the South Carolina front seven. Tennessee has lost 19 straight games against ranked teams. The last win was in 09 against South Carolina. Had a little trouble with the exchange. And there's Clowney picking up the running back, Neal, and planning him. That looked like Michigan with the exception of the helmet coming off. Richardson tries to log him on the outside. Boy, that really does look like Michigan. Everybody's been clamoring for Jadavion Clowney to make this kind of hit, and it's his quickness off the ball that beats Richardson inside. I know you've seen this before, Vincent Smith, hello. The only difference is the helmet came off here and the ball came out. Tennessee with a third down and nine after the Clowney hit. Worley with time towards the end zone, broken up and incomplete. The linebacker Marquise Roberts running with Rajon Neal out of the backfield. And it's fourth down, and Tennessee will bring on the field goal unit. Well, that's one of the matchups that Tennessee wants to isolate are the backs on the linebackers. They feel like Rajon Neal, Marlon Lane can beat some of these linebackers for South Carolina in coverage, but that time a great job by Holloman. Well, Pilardi on for a 37-yard try. And Tennessee strikes first. So 3-0 Tennessee early here in Knoxville. Love drama? Tag a friend in that old photo. <gasps> Where's her busy ear? <laughs> Hate drama? Go to Cars.com. Our dealership reviews help you get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive. No drama. Rain and shine. Pick state on my mind. Dash low on the beats. Got an ounce of kind. B.A. Believe that I'm a goal for mine. Till I'm mixed up. Gotta get my cash up. Rain and shine. The turbocharged Nissan Juke. Turns a drive into a ride. Now get a $169 per month lease on a 2013 Nissan Juke. Howdy, partner. You're not Linda. I'm filling in for Officer Owens. She used double miles from her Capital One Venture card to take an early vacation. Buckle up. Let's go do cop stuff. <laughs> License and Venture card, ma'am. Was I going too fast? Oh, you'd be going twice as fast if you had double miles. Get away fast with unlimited double miles from the Capital One Venture card. <laughs> Don't touch the face. Can I drive? Absolutely not. What's in your wallet? Oh, that's right. Pretzel bun. Yeah, awesome cheeseburger. No, it's not. It's not awesome? Oh, it's not a cheeseburger. Look what's on a pretzel bun now. Wendy's new pretzel pub chicken. Now that's better. That son of yours? The daredevil? He's always on that motorcycle revving the engine. Vroom, vroom some kind of juvenile delinquent. When is he going to grow up? He says, I know, Ma, it's too much fun. Well, I have been on that motorcycle. It is not fun. Some people want more out of life, and we ensure the things that make more possible. Safeco Insurance. Find a local agent at safeco.com. This is College Football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. Welcome back to Knoxville. South Carolina trailing 3-0, but Jadavian Clowney has played seven snaps, and he already has two tackles for a loss. Going up against Antonio Richardson, the talented left tackle for Tennessee. Well, we talked about how emotional this game would be for Antonio Richardson. And he's come out, and I think he's trying to take the fight to Jadavion Clowney a little bit too aggressively. He's got to be patient, as we said, let Clowney come to him and react. He's trying to go and get him, and Clowney's quickness has been too much. 
This will be a touchback and come out to the 25 for South Carolina. You take a look on that last hit. The quickness off the line of scrimmage is what sets Jadavian Clowney apart. And Richardson's going to try to log him, but he gets inside. And that's everybody talks about him rushing the passer. He's equally as good against the run. And that, that looks exactly like the hit outside of him not losing the helmet that he had against Shaw in the in the bowl game. What did Steve Spurrier tell Tom Luganville on game day, or Spurrier calls him Lugie? He, he said, <laughs> Lugie, everybody expects that play. It, it's not going to happen every game. Well, it, it happened today. Further, the legend of Jadavian Clowney. Connor Shaw back to work for South Carolina. And through the hands of the intended receiver, Shaq Rowland, incomplete. As you look at Antonio Richardson from his tackle position, it's very clear that he is setting based on Jadavion Clowney's alignment and whether he has one hand on the ground or two hands on the ground. And Brian, you mentioned how he's been a bit over aggressive because now I think he's guessing that Jadavion Clowney's changing it up. He gets a four point stance, yet he shoots inside, and I don't think Richardson expected that. I'm not expecting to be that quick either. <laughs> Give, uh, give Clowney some credit, too, in the offseason. He's a little bit of a different player than he was against Richardson a year ago. Play clock was at one, and a penalty flag down. No play. It'll be delay a game. Before the snap, delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. O'Connor Shaw... Trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage, getting it from the sideline, and that's on Connor Shaw, but it's also on the coaching staff and Steve Spurrier getting those plays and audibles from the line of scrimmage in a timely fashion. So second down at 15. Shaw to throw again. It's a screen. And incomplete, intended for Mike Davis. Daniel Hood for Tennessee destroyed that play. Guys, the stadium down here is deafening. And keep in mind, South Carolina is backed up. They've got terrible field position this entire first quarter. And they're having a hard time communicating at the line. And the crowd is cranking up. The Gamecocks are going to have to come up with something to counter this crowd noise. Well, Tennessee, even though it lost in its last game, here two weeks ago against Georgia in overtime gave the players and fans a sense of things going in the right direction for the program. Shaw has another drop pass, this by Mike Davis. So two drops on that possession, and it's fourth down. And Tennessee brought pressure from the edge, and they had Davis wide open out there. He's going to outrun A.J. Johnson. If that ball is thrown in front of him by Connor Shaw, he had to get rid of it because of the blitzers. But you got to get that ball out in front, and it's a touchdown. It's a missed opportunity for Connor Shaw. Good read to identify that blitz pressure. Just poor execution on the throw. Here comes the punt with Young as the deep man. Another short kick. And a lot of traffic, but it's fair caught at the 45-yard line. 35-yard punt, no return. Tennessee ball when we come back, 3-0. The balls have the lead, but they're having trouble blocking number seven. College football today. UCLA, Stanford, and Iowa, Ohio State. Revolution has begun. Entertainment Weekly calls the Fifth Estate edgy and exciting. He's a threat to national security. Provocative raves Rolling Stone. Oh my God. The Fifth Estate is a first-rate thriller. They're coming after us. The Fifth Estate made it R. Right now at Friday's, get an entree like Jack Daniel's sirloin or our double glazed ribs and an appetizer for just 10 bucks. Seriously, this is 10 bucks. In here, it's always Friday. Monday night, Adrian Peterson and the Vikings. Take it right the football right down your throat. Eli Manning and the Giants. Touchdown! What a run! Two teams desperate for a win. Come on! Meet on Monday Night Football. Vikings, Giants. 825 Eastern on ESPN. It all comes down to Monday night. 
For the first time ever, Toyota is announcing a hybrid sales event with unbelievable savings on every new Toyota hybrid, including Camry, Highlander, and Avalon Hybrid, plus the entire Prius family. And now you can get 0% financing on any new 2013 Prius, Prius V, or Prius C. Or you can lease this Prius C for just $189 a month. Plus, you get Toyota Care two-year maintenance. Don't miss the Toyota Hybrid Sales Event. Toyota, let's go places. No company ever wants to lose a customer, so Charter's invested two years and $2 billion to upgrade our fiber-rich network and deliver better services. But over at the satellite TV companies, they have a different way to keep customers. Complicated multi-year legal contracts with steep penalties and escalating price increases. That's called lawyering up. Better services or more legal mumbo jumbo? Hmm. ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Great scene here in Knoxville, Tennessee trying to win its first league game. It's lost 16 of its last 18 SEC contests. An early 3-0 lead, an excellent starting field position again on the 45-yard line. And here's Rajon Neal off the right edge. Gets a handful before Chaz Sutton makes the stop. Junior quarterback Justin Worley started three games as a true freshman two years ago. So this is his ninth career start. See his numbers on the season. And he's not ideally suited from a mobility standpoint for what Butch Jones and Mike Bajaki and the offensive coordinator want to do in this offense. More like what they did at Cincinnati, Zach Caleros, et cetera. What they want to do is get to the edge with the quarterback. And this throw off the mark. So it's third down. Let's check in with Reese Davis now in the studio. Dave, this is Sports Center right now, presented by the Bank of New York Mellon. Texas Tech on the road, Davis Webb to Jason Morrow. And I say it's always using your Mellon if you throw it to Jason Morrow. That guy's a weapon. Red Raiders up 7 0 on the road. Hard race here, it's 3 0 for Tennessee. And a third down and five. Balls have the ball at midfield. They fake it to Howard. And the tight end, Brendan Downs, made the catch, but he's going nowhere fast. Sky Moore, coming off suffering a concussion against Arkansas, healthy enough to play today, made a big hit, and it's fourth down. Well, that's those linebackers are young. They lost five seniors at the linebacker position from a year ago, and they've had trouble in stopping the run and stopping misdirection pass. And Sky Moore is a, is a true freshman that they're really excited about because he can run. Diagnosed the play there and came up and made a stop to bring fourth down. Now Polardi in South Carolina inside its 10 yard line on the last kick. And again Cooper the deep man. And he had trouble with it but able to bear catch signal and secure the ball at the 11 yard line. Big one obviously in the ACC tonight maybe the biggest. In the regular season, Florida State and Clemson, Jameis Winston against Taj Boyd. Saturday Night Football presented by Windows 8 Eastern on ABC. That might be the biggest ACC game ever. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You picked Florida State. Why? Well, I just think that Florida State's defense, especially in the secondary, is a little bit more reliable than, than what Clemson has, specifically at the safety position. Clemson's safeties struggle coming up and making tackles, and that will be a key, I think, tonight. Biggest test for Jameis Winston in his young career having a play at Clemson. It'll be loud there. Here's Davis. Big hole up the middle. Breaks it to the outside. He's got home run speed. They finally catch him in Tennessee territory at the 44-yard line. Great 45 yard scamper. Yeah, great blocking up front. Let it roll here. You see big Dan McCullers on the inside, number 98. Good job, and then poor angle from the safeties, both of them out of position. And when you give Mike Davis a crease, he's going to make you pay. They fumble the exchange, the ball's on the ground. Mayhem happens out of the pile for sure. And it's Tennessee ball. Mike Davis is holding the ball saying I've got the football. Steve Spurrier is upset. 
But the ruling on the field is Tennessee. Clayton Stagnick is the center. They're just trying to run a power there. Sometimes when you run the power and the center has to block back severely, he'll leave a little early, and that, and that center quarterback exchange can suffer. I think that's exactly what happened. They can't review possession here, so it is Tennessee ball on its 45-yard line. Another takeaway by the balls, their 16th of the year, tied for first in the SEC. Neal, no running room, and look who's there again. The third tackle for a loss for Clowney, matching his entire season total. You might want to try running away from him. <laughs> He's just to allow Tiny Richardson to settle down a little bit because clearly uh, he's 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 not doing the best job right now in, in blocking Clowney. So let him, let him settle down, run the other direction. Early to throw here and knocked down, incomplete, intended for Marquez North. Victor Hanton had the coverage, so it's third down and 11. Great coverage from Victor Hampton last week. They held him out of the first series because Steve Spurrier was not happy with his play. He's a senior and a leader. That time, excellent coverage. He's responded well to that uh, directive from Steve Spurrier. But you got to play better. You got to be a leader in that secondary. There is a movement on the offensive line, so penalty marker. All start. Number 74, offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. You think Antonio Richardson was thinking about Clowney there in third and 11? I don't think he's thinking about much of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Came up out of his stance there. So now third down and 16. After the takeaway. Middle of your screen, Clowney against Richardson here in third and 16. And Clowney gets tackled, and there goes Swirling. Breaks a tackle, trying to get the first down, but short. Fourth down and three, big hit by T.J. Gurley. What do you do if you're Tennessee? Go for it. You're on their side of the field, across the 50. Ends up a fourth and two, it's going to be. They're going to punt. Ah. <laughs> you, you've had some some momentum opportunities early in this game a turnover and I think you got to seize that if you're Tennessee as an underdog Butch Jones maybe looked at Farrell Cooper and said you know he's had some trouble here on the first two punt returns let's see if Pilardi can pin him deep maybe Cooper will make a mistake again short punt and again, the fair catch made just short of the 20-yard line by Cooper. It remains 3-0 Tennessee. Rain and shine, the pick state on the mind. Stash low on the beats, got an ounce of kind. B.A., believe that I'm a go for mine. Till I'm mixed up, gotta get my cash up. Rain and shine. The turbocharged Nissan Juke. Turns a drive into a ride. Now get a $169 per month lease on a 2013 Nissan Juke. settling for the same old same old or are you making it the original with pizza huts ten dollar any pizza deal any pizza any size any toppings delivery dine in or carry out just ask for or use promo code 10 any we all have a choice make it great
practical precision for the perfect picture. Learning from you. LG G2. Hey, what's that? Oh, uh, new Cheez-It Zings, the crunchiest Cheez-It yet. <laughs> Please, no. Wild Zings. We take the time for our cheese to mature before we bake Wild it into our new Zings crackers. Because at Cheez-It, real cheese matters. The most storied conference in college athletics will live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home, the SEC Network, launching August 2014. For more information, go to GetSECNetwork.com. Dave Pash, Brian Greasy, and Tom Luganville in Knoxville. Close to 100,000 in attendance here at Neyland Stadium to watch South Carolina and Tennessee. It's 3 0 balls. Gamecocks, their third possession starting inside their 20. They've had some injuries and suspensions on offense the last few weeks, but they're now at full strength. Shaq rolling back after being suspended three games for a university policy violation. And Bruce Ellington, despite having his foot in a boot in practice this week, has played for the Gamecock so far. Davis nowhere to go stacked up at the point of attack and Steve Spurrier was trying to call timeout it looks like he got it in second time early in this game where they've been up against the play clock trying to change a play at the line of scrimmage and that's poor when it's out of a timeout especially Absolutely. I sense you've overpacked your stomach. Try Pepto to go. It's Pepto Bismol that fits in your pocket. Relief can be yours, but your peanuts are mine. For the police, this car is finished. 90,000 hard miles. But I'm hoping for another 300,000. They used Mobile One for performance. I use it to keep my cars running like new. I run Mobile One in my own car. Guess what I drive? Keep your engine running like new. Mobile One. Stick with innovation. Stick with power. Stick with technology. Get the FlexCare Platinum, new from Philips Sonicare. In Knoxville, where South Carolina has been up against the play clock a couple times, Tom Lugan builds down by the South Carolina sideline. What might be happening? Well, they're having trouble with communication. I think they've got to eliminate some of the check with me calls that they're giving Connor Shaw and just line up and run a play because field position and crowd noise is disrupting the flow of this offense. And you pointed out during commercial there that when they did line up and just hand it off to Davis, he ran for 45 yards. Oh, almost an interception by A.J. Johnson. Bird was running a slant. Sapp got a little pressure that forced the throw by Sean Johnson almost with a pick. Well, they were confused. Here's Johnson right here. He's just going to pop out after the snap. You see no safety, and Connor Shaw never saw him, and that's one that A.J. Johnson wants to have back. As a linebacker, that's your dream. <laughs> you just catch that ball. Use two hands. Why are you trying to use one hand? Get two hands on that ball, and he had a touchdown. Shaw's completing almost 70 percent of his passes on the year but he's 0 for 5 here in the first quarter. And finally a completion as Bird pulls it in but he's tackled immediately by true freshman corner Cameron Sutton short of the first down by about four yards. And if you're Connor Shaw you need to get things under control here quick. You've had trouble with communications. It's loud. You almost threw a pick six on the last play. Now you got a third down and four. You have to use your experience as a senior and manage this situation for your team. All-time leader in completion percentage at South Carolina. They're only 4,000-yard passer and 1,000-yard rusher. Had a brilliant career for the Gamecocks. Davis on third and four. Powers pass. Johnson. 
Gets the first down. How about that? You got a 250 pound fierce linebacker taking on a 215 pound tailback, and Davis wins that matchup. This is what separates Mike Davis. He's lightning fast, but look at the power. He can get it in the I hole, the take dirty. defensive linemen, linebackers and power for the first down yards after contact Luke's talked about it earlier that's what separates Mike Davis well first down South Carolina and just past its 30 yard line still checking at the line of scrimmage and Connor Shaw has to communicate to everybody what the new play is play clock is at three it's Davis to the 35 for about three. Jacquez Smith made the hit for Tennessee. Second down and seven coming up. I think Steve Spurrier has found that the best player on his offense is Mike Davis. And he didn't know that coming into the year. He didn't know, you know how who's going to take over for Marcus Lattimore. I still have my quarterback and I want to use him to run a little bit. But we've seen South Carolina's offense develop over the course of this year into more of a power running offense inside the tackles much more so than we've ever seen South Carolina in the past. Davis 10th of the country first in the SEC in rushing entering today. Second down and seven. Shaw will throw in trouble. Oh he gets nailed inside the 25 yard line. Marlon Walls with the sack for Tennessee. Coaches are really excited about Marlon Walls. He's matched up on Corey Robinson and just gives him an up, up the field move and comes back underneath. And that was too easy. Tennessee could rush the passer off the edge with Walls, Jacquez Smith, Jordan Williams, Corey Miller, those four guys. Even Corey Vereen, the freshman, they have got talent on the edge to rush the passer. Third down and long, and again the play clock winding down. It's at one. Shaw never saw it. And here comes another penalty flag. The second delay a game, and now another flag comes in well after the initial flag, and it's thrown in the backfield. It would have been a grounding penalty. Before the snap, delay of game, number 14, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. There was no play, so there is no foul for intentional grounding. Yeah, the uh, official there threw the flag, and this, but they pick it up. There's no play. And this is this has got to be driving Steve Spurrier crazy, but it's partly to blame. He's got to get the plays in. You're on the road. It's loud. Don't underestimate how difficult it is to communicate the plays at the line of scrimmage. It's on both Spurrier and Connor Shaw. And Tennessee has to call a timeout. They didn't have enough players on the field. And let's check in with Reese while we have a moment back in the studio. Taco Bell studio update, Dave. This is TCU in Oklahoma State. You know that rule about putting your heels on the tenants of punt return and don't go backwards? Uh, yeah, that doesn't really apply to Josh Stewart of Oklahoma State. 95 yards on the punt return, the longest in school history, and the Cowpokes are up late in the first quarter, 7-0. Here it is 3-0 Tennessee. The balls have really not been able to move the football, but neither is South Carolina. Really only have one play in this game that's been significant, and that was the 45-yard run by Mike Davis. Meanwhile, South Carolina's had third and 12, third and 15. Now it's third down and 21. Oh, and South Carolina has, these are self-inflicted wounds. Three times they've been up against the play clock. Twice I've gotten penalties. The turnover on a, on a muff snap. Uh, that's been the problem for them. And on the other side, Jadavian Clown has just been in beast mode early on in this game and taking it over. Two tackles for a loss for Jadavian Clowney. Sean Carson is in the backfield here on third down and 21. I don't know why you're checking at third and 21. Not a whole lot of plays to check to that are going to get this conversion for you. And the play clock to three and a flag down. Quarterback draw and Shaw tackled at the 25 yard line. See what the penalty flag is. 
Spurrier upset with somebody. <laughs> Spurrier's out by the numbers. You better be careful. I think he was upset with everybody, not somebody. Illegal formation, <laughs> number 53 offense was not on the line of scrimmage. The penalties declined. The result of the play is a fourth down. So another punt coming up for South Carolina, which should give a Tennessee a good field position again. I think Steve Spurrier was looking for a late hit there on the Connor Shaw on his quarterback, looking for any anything that'll get him a cheap first down and get his momentum for his offense. South Carolina scored 52 points last week. No, we're only one quarter in, but it doesn't look like the same offense so far. Here's Carter. Makes the first man miss. Across the 40. And past the 45. That's been the average starting field position on the day for Tennessee. Well, it doesn't matter where they started because number seven hasn't let them go very far. True. And... You see where he's lined up. He's been moving around a lot this year. Today, not at all. All over Antonio Richardson 15 times. You see the tackles for loss. And I think they're going to start this series with him on the sideline and allow his backup, Darius English, to come in. I think this is an attempt for them to manage the number of snaps that Jadavia and Clowney plays so that he says as effective in the fourth quarter as he is in the first quarter. South Carolina's defense as a whole faced only 37 snaps last week. Here's Neal, and he's wrapped up immediately, excuse me, Lane by Phillip Dukes. That's Marlon Lane, the number two tailback, who's back after missing the Georgia game with a foot injury two, year, uh, two weeks ago. Now, very different than when Jadavian Clowney's in there. Darius English is 6'6", 226 pounds. I'd run right at him. Here's Lane again. He slips a tackle this time, finds a running lane, and gets the first down. A terrific run by junior Marlon Lane. And this was Darius English's play to make. You're going to see number five come up the field. He's got to make that play. He's just not as physical, obviously, as Jadavian Clowney. And our Tennessee go right back at him. It'll be a pass play here. Worley looking downfield. Got him in. Incomplete. Cody Blank could not make the catch on the sideline. This ball was thrown a little bit to the outside. Very poorly played by T.J. Gurley. Looks like his right foot is down. He did not have control yeah. of that ball. You have to make that play. He was still juggling it, and that's why it was ruled incomplete. This will give you a better look at it here. Just went right through. He's in bounds, but now they're going to look at it here. And again, the ruling in the field is incomplete. It has to be indisputable. Video evidence to overturn it. He eventually secured it, but did he step out of bounds first after he finally secured the ball? He doesn't have it there. No. He now the left foot is in. The question is, did he control it before that right foot came down? And the, the right foot hit out of bounds. That's a little bit closer than I thought originally. There was the left foot down when he had possession. Because if not, his right foot was out of bounds. And the ruling of the field is incomplete. And Justin Worley may have hurt his thumb may have hit it on a uh, shoulder pad or a helmet he's clearly not happy not happy that that was ruled incomplete and not happy that he hit his his hand well, his backup or backups I should say are both true freshmen let's see here oh yeah the helmet out oh yeah gosh that that hurts that hurts lucky after further review the ruling on the field is confirmed second down so there you go the, the right foot hit out of bounds first after he had possession he juggled it initially so incomplete well you hope for Justin Worley that that just bruised a lot of times you can catch the thumb coming down on a helmet or a pad and actually tear ligaments in there but he looks like uh, he's going to be all right or at least try to play through it Penalty flag down. Here's a wide receiver screen to Pig Howard, wrapped up and dumped by Kawan Lewis. But as mentioned, another penalty marker.
Illegal formation, number 74, offense was not on the line of scrimmage. The penalties decline. Third down. Now we've seen that twice now. It was called once on South Carolina's left tackle. Here, Tennessee's left tackle, Tiny Richardson, with the foul. The rule is you got to have the helmet cross the waistband of the center. And you can understand why he's trying to get a head start with Jadavion Clowney coming off the edge. Well, look at him here. How's that any different where he was lined up there? But no flat. Worley gets nailed. His pass incomplete intended for Howard. Worley slow to get up. Great stunt from defensive line of South Carolina coming right underneath. That is a difficult place to be. Holloman, give him credit, didn't go high, hit him right in the chest. If you go high, that's going to be a penalty, but a great stunt. Leads to pressure and a conversion on third down for South Carolina. He was trying to protect that thumb, too, on the follow through when the hit came. Yeah, we need to keep an eye on that because if you hit that and it starts to swell, even that can prevent you from throwing the ball effectively. South Carolina only had 10 guys on the field. They run a defender on there late. And the fair catch made at the five yard line by the true freshman, Farrow Cooper. What a mistake from him. Doing the job for the coverage team. <laughs> 41 yard punt. Here are the four drives for South Carolina. Granted, they really haven't had good starting field position on average. Their starting field position is their own 16. Throughout the 2013 season, South Carolina has been dependent on their offense and really has masked, masked some of the inadequacies of their defense. So far in this game, that has been completely flip-flopped. Their defense has kept them uh, in this game, and the offense is trying to find the legs. Shaw in the pistol. And Davis off the right side. Breaks a tackle and lunges for the first down marker at the 15 yard line. Hit by Walls. Boy, he gets up a little bit gimpy. Yeah, he's he's calling for a sub. The coach has said, nope, stay out there. He was calling to come to, the, to, to have Sean Carson come in the game. Tell you what, if that's going to happen, I just go back down on the ground. Buy myself a little time to force me to get a replacement. He'll give it to Davis. And again, he runs over a defender, this time at safety, Ladarrell McNeil. Gain of about eight. Not only do they not let him come out, but they give him the, the ball again. It looks like he got his ankle caught or his foot caught underneath. And maybe South Carolina, the coaches on the sideline, didn't see it. But if he had signals to come out, it's one thing not to let him come out. It's a whole other thing to turn around and hand him the football. And Carson was in there, but it's the end of the first quarter. Sloppy opening period here in Knoxville, but Tennessee will take it, a 3-0 lead for the Vols. Red Lobster's Crab Fest with three entrees under $20. Like our new snow crab and crab butter shrimp, just $14.99. Only at Red Lobster, where we see food differently. Now try seven lunch choices at $7.99. Sandwiches, salads, and more. Rain the turbocharged Nissan Juke turns a drive into a ride. Now get a $169 per month lease on a 2013 Nissan Juke. Like a child, this Cree LED bulb could be in your house for decades. Unlike a child, it'll pay for itself and spend its life saving you money. And it will never pierce its tongue. The Cree LED bulb. A restaurant meal is over $10.50 per meal. A restaurant quality dinner from Bertoli costs $5 a serving. Replacing one restaurant dinner a week saves your family of four over $1,000 a year. Save money. Live better. Walmart. Another beer? Sure. Give me a... Um... Give me a Red's Apple Ale. Red's Apple Ale. 
Now also available in strawberry. This is not a hotel. It's an idea that travel should be brilliant. The promise of spaces as expansive as your imagination. This is not business as usual. It's a new take on taking a meeting. A new way to inspire, create, and yes, dream. Because it's not only about where you're staying, it's about where you're going. Marriott, travel brilliantly. Yeah, I'm married. Does it matter? You do that for me? Really? Yeah, I'd like that. Who are you talking to? Uh, it's Jake from State Farm. Sounds like a really good deal. Jake from State Farm at three in the morning? Who is this? It's, it's Jake from State Farm. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh, khakis. She sounds hideous. Well, she's a guy, so. Another reason more people stay with State Farm. Get to a better state. Tennessee quarterback Justin Worley, a question mark now to return. Hurts his right hand, hitting the thumb on the helmet of Gerald Dixon. Saw him throwing on the sideline. A little bit earlier, and they're also getting one of the backups, Riley Ferguson, warmed up. Let's get an update from Tom. So guys, I'm standing right behind the bench here and watching Justin Worley as they work on his thumb. He's trying to make some throws. You can tell he doesn't have the velocity that he's accustomed to having on the football. Also went over and got the center, trying to take some snaps from under center if he had to. It's not looking good right now. We'll keep you updated. And meanwhile, Mike Davis has not returned. It is Sean Carson at tailback. Second down in a yard, and Shaw will throw. And Shaw going downfield and got him in. It's pulled in by Demir Bird. He'll take it to the house. Touchdown, Carolina. A 76-yard touchdown pass by Connor Shaw. We saw South Carolina open the season against North Carolina with this same play. When you pound Mike Davis and establish that running game, defenses have to respect it, and Demir Bird is their big play wide receiver down the field with the speed to make him pay. He's a sprinter on the track team. 45-yard touchdown catch against Arkansas. 62-yard touchdown catch against Kentucky. And a 76-yard touchdown reception here today. And the extra point by Fry makes it 7-3, Gamecocks. You take a look there. He's going to run the post on the outside. Here's Bird. Here's the tight end. And watch the reaction from the safety. As soon as Connor Shaw sees the safety take the tight end, he knows he's got Bird, and there's no question that he's going to outrun the defense with his speed and his perfectly thrown ball. Great balance when this offense, which has started slow in the first quarter, but when they get the play action pass working and Connor Shaw is throwing the ball as effectively as he is this year, then you get 11 touchdowns and zero interceptions. You get the kind of efficient play that Steve Spurrier has been talking about in this offense is, is difficult to stop. There are some great quarterbacks in the SEC. Where, where do you put Connor Shaw well, in the conversation. I, I think he's the most underrated quarterback in the SEC. I don't think he's the best because there's some really good quarterbacks playing right now, but he is the most underrated. And if I had one game to go and win, the competitive nature of Connor Shaw, the toughness, you know what you're going to get from him. I feel pretty good about him in that game. Over Johnny Manziel, over AJ McCarron. I'm not going to say he's better than yeah. those guys because I, I, you know, over time. McCarron has proven himself. You have to respect that. And Johnny Manziel is a once-in-a-generation player. Uh, but I don't think it's fair to always compare guys, right? I mean, Connor Shaw is going to go out as the winningest quarterback in South Carolina history, and he deserves the credit for that. And, and he deserves the credit for the way that he's played in efficient fashion this year. He is two wins shy of Todd Ellis a time the record. He's the play-by-play -play guy for South Carolina. See, all play-by-play -play guys aren't pencil necks. <laughs> and a former quarterback. Maybe you'll be a play-by-play -play guy eventually. You want me to take your job? You could take Reese's job. How about that? <laughs> Reese, go ahead. I, I'm not going to give it up that easily, Dave. Innovative look brought to you by AT&T tonight. Florida State and Clemson. Vic Beasley's been 
better than anybody in sacking the quarterback, but it's going to be tough to get Jameis Winston on the ground as Maryland found out. Winston, after escaping, keeps his eyes downfield and finds the golden cub, Nick O'Leary, for the touchdown. Florida State and Clemson on ABC tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. Tied race, and Justin Worley is back out there at quarterback. First down for Tennessee on the 25 yard line. It's Neal met in the hole and pushed back. He still got about three yards. What's the biggest challenge for Worley playing with that injured thumb? Is it on the snap? Is it on the throw? Well, it's on both. I mean, you take that snap and that ball comes up if he's under center. Now, I don't anticipate him being under center. Let's keep an eye on that. But once you go to throw the ball, the thumb is the anchor point, right? And so you have to have strength there. And if he's just got swelling in that joint, it would be very difficult to control the spin on the ball. They're going to run it again. And a big hole for Neal. First down, Tennessee to the 40-yard line. That's a 12-yard gain before Marquise Roberts makes the tackle. Well, you're going to have to have the running game on the inside if your quarterback is having trouble gripping the football. And Rajon Neal has been reliable, steady, in the running game for Tennessee this year. 159 yards per game. The last two gets dropped in the backfield here by Kelsey Quarles. So is that just a bad read there by Worley or just a good play by Quarles? Well, I think what's happening now is South Carolina understands that they don't know if Justin Worley can throw the ball. So they're going to bring all kinds of pressure to stop the run on the inside. I don't even think there's a read involved here. Justin Worley's just giving Ray John Neal the football. So he's not a threat to run, so it's a design handoff. You know, might look uh, to uh, a casual fan like it's the read option. Worley finds Howard, who breaks a tackle. Can't get the first down, but makes it a third down and manageable situation. Third down at about four. Well, that's the first pass we've seen, and it was on target, so hopefully he'll be able to play through this. But you're right, Worley is not a mobile threat and so in this offense which we know from which Jones really want to have a mobile quarterback uh, they are missing that in Justin Worley but they do make up for that with his ability to throw the ball a little bit third down and four out of an empty set that's Howard the motion man and Worley fires incomplete but a flag Marquez North the intended receiver he was being covered by Ahmad Christian It'll be a first down for Tennessee. Two penalty markers on the play. Pass interference, number four, defense. The penalty is a first down at the spot of the foul. Marquez North is a big wide receiver, 6'4", 215 pounds, and Christian just gets there a little bit early, the right hand. He tried to pull it off. I think that's a good call. So again, Tennessee and South Carolina territory. Here's a pitch to Devon Young, who is coming on the jet sweep. He's to the 37, so a gain of four there. You see Tennessee has been focusing a lot of these plays on the right side of the field because that's away from number seven for South Carolina. I think they've learned that if we're going to get some yardage, we're going to throw the ball quick, run the ball to the right side of the formation away from Clowney. All 23 snaps for Clowney have been played at right defensive end. Worley will throw on second and six. Right open in the middle of the field as the tight end downs, and he's to the 20. A 17-yard pass play. Well, they're just going to manage Clowney with quick passing game. You're going to see, here he is. He's going to release, and they throw the ball right around Clowney's ears. Nobody left there. Missed the assignment from the linebacker position where the struggles have been for South Carolina, picking up the man coverage. Back to the ground game, and Neal dies for the 15-yard line out of the arms of Marquise Roberts. That's a five-yard pickup. Worley looks okay so far throwing the football after the injury. And Rajon Neal continues to be effective. Former wide receiver, played running back last year and this year. He's fourth in the SEC in rushing. Here he is again, upended short of the first down at the 12 by J.T. Surratt. 
A big third down here for Tennessee. Already got down here once and had to settle for a field goal. There is an injured volunteer. It's uh, Alex Bullard, the left guard, who's already been banged up. Heard some in practice this week. His backup, Marcus, Car uh, Marcus Jackson, is a guy that started before. We'll see if he replaces him when we come back. Every month, thousands of people are switching to Buick's innovative technology, design, and luxury. How are they arriving at this decision? In Lexuses, Acuras, Hondas, Infinities, Toyotas, Nissan. If you don't know our luxurious new lineup, you don't know Buick. During the Buick sell-down, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus 1,000 on the best of remaining 2013 Buick LaCrosses. Uh-huh, honey, I got this. We got this, right? Dry cleaning done, gift for your aunt. Done. Today we're going to be talking about your body after baby. Yep, we're done. Okay, let's get some lunch. Yes! <laughs> all right. Yes, honey, all natural, everything. Done. Ah, oh, I forgot to check. Done. On your phone, online, on the go. Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. Oh, Pretzel bun. Yeah, awesome cheeseburger. No, it's not. It's not awesome? Oh, it's not a cheeseburger. Look what's on a pretzel bun now. Wendy's new pretzel pub chicken. Now that's better. Smoke in the sky and fire in the air. Desire burns between them. Lead your way. Sing your song. Moving every day. No matter who you cheer for, we're all fans. Great tailgates start at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. It's quiz time at the Built Ford Tough Sales Event. What truck's been number one 36 years straight? Hint, this ain't multiple choice. It's Ford. How do we know? We did a little number crunching. Forestry, we came out on top. Building stuff, same result. It's simple math. More Ford trucks are out there with you getting the job done. That's why we own work. Now crunch these numbers. Get zero for 60 plus up to 1,500 cash or up to 5,500 cash back on Super Duty. Only at your local Ford dealer. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. The Tennessee River back here in Knoxville. Temperature around 65 degrees. Cloudy and cool for mid-October game here between Tennessee and South Carolina. Wide open SEC East. And wrapped up, but a penalty flag down. Clowney made the tackle on Neal, but may have gotten the face mask and twisted it, which would give Tennessee a first down. That was third down and two right there. And he would have stopped him. Yeah, that's a big penalty. Personal foul, face mask, number seven, defense. Half the distance to the goal from the previous spot, first down. That could be potentially a four-point penalty. They would have been forced to attempt a field goal right there. don't think they would have gone for it on fourth down, but hands up around the face mask. Yeah, that was an easy call for the official. So first down and goal for Tennessee at the South Carolina six-yard line. under center here with that injured thumb. Neal, uh, maybe a yard. Chaz Sutton leading the charge. South Carolina, they'll spot him at the six, so officially no game. I know that Butch Jones would prefer to be physical and run this football into the end zone, but South Carolina is not going to allow him to do that. They are stacking the box. It's man-to-man, one-on-one coverage on the outside, and they're going to force Justin Worley to throw this football. They've got two guys, Marquez, North, and Kroom, who are big wide receivers on the outside. Tenth play of the drive. Worley will throw, facing pressure, end zone pass is caught! Atonement for Pig Howard after the big fumble in overtime against Georgia two weeks ago. Nice catch there, touchdown Tennessee. South 
Carolina expecting run, playing man-to-man -man coverage. And Pig Howard has been their most consistent player on offense. He was outstanding against Georgia. Had his heart ripped out on that play you mentioned. It's a big touchdown. Extra point makes it 10-7. Worley with his 10th touchdown pass, the third touchdown catch for Alton Pig Howard. You guys got a great deal. We went to cars.com and used their side-by-side -side comparison tool, so it was easy, but... But you were hoping for a little more drama? Kinda, yeah. <sighs> Try this. Rachel? Scott, the baby's yours. Steven. What we have, it's so real. No. You should leave her. Oh, my Steven. Better? Yeah, yeah, that was perfect. That was great. <laughs> Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive. No drama. Man comes with a state-of-the-art casing. Care for it with Dove Men Plus Care Body Wash. It protects man's skin from dryness as it cleans. Warning, without proper protection, damage will occur. Ooh. Dove Men Plus Care Body Wash. Skin care built in. Ditch the average game day. Hit the new DNB Sports Bar at Dave & Buster's, where you can watch the games and play the games. Fuel the fun with game day specials like $5 appetizers. Watch the games, play the games. The new DNB Sports Bar, only at your local Dave & Buster's. Every month, thousands of people are switching to Buick's innovative technology, design, and luxury. How are they arriving at this decision? In Lexuses, Acuras, Hondas, Infinities, Toyotas, Nissan. If you don't know our luxurious new lineup, you don't know Buick. During the Buick sell-down, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus 1,000 on the best of remaining 2013 Buick LaCrosses. Seven called. It wants its camera phone back. How's this for a drama shot? Why aren't we getting closer? With the Nokia Lumia 1020, we got the best seats in the house. Meet the Nokia Lumia 1020 with 41 megapixels and reinvented zoom. Nothing else comes close. ESPN College Football, brought to you by New Windows. Tweet your Saturday Superfan photos to College Game Day for a chance to win a trip to a bowl game. A critical game for South Carolina in the SEC East race. Worley, they're actually uh, looking at the back of his left hand. It's the uh, right thumb that he heard earlier, but looked okay throwing the ball on that drive. A six-yard touchdown pass to Pig Howard. He's got blood on the left hand, banged up thumb on the right hand. That's all right. Let you know you've been out there working. A little blood, big deal. Looked like on that throw, right on target. Another deep kickoff, and... Cooper will take a knee and will come out to the 25 for South Carolina. The chase for the Sprint Cup meets the big one at Talladega Super Speedway with only five races left. Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Johnson still out in front. Anything can happen, though, at NASCAR's most unpredictable track. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Talladega presented by 5R Energy Sunday at 1 on ESPN. Coming into this game, you got South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida all tied at 3-1, trailing Missouri, who is atop the SEC East at 2-0. Missouri playing Florida right now. Tennessee is 0-2 on the season in conference play, and the only wins overall for the uh, balls this year against South Alabama, Austin P, Western Kentucky. But they were close against Georgia, and they've got South Carolina by three, early second quarter right now. Davis back on the field. And he'll get it. Trying to cut to the outside. Oh, a somersault after the hit by Justin Coleman and minimal gain on the play. This Tennessee defense is playing with some swagger. Coming up from the secondary, Coleman. All these secondary players. We had a chance to talk to Brian Randolph last night. We asked him if he would try to tackle Mike Davis high or low. He said, I think I'll probably go low. He's 215 pounds and very difficult to bring down. Great tackle by Coleman. And a 
bad snap. Shaw in trouble. Down he goes. Actually got a yard before Danny O'Brien was there for Tennessee. Things just haven't been in sync for South Carolina on offense outside of the long touchdown pass. That ball comes up high. It's very difficult as a quarterback when that happens because you want to have your eyes downfield reading coverage and seeing where to throw the football. And when that ball takes you off, it, it knocks all your rhythm off. Shaw fires to Ellington. Couldn't hang on. Fourth down. First time that Ellington has been targeted today. Coming off a foot injury. South Carolina will punt. He would have been short of the first down. Yeah. He was looking to try to get that yardage before he secured the ball. And it hasn't gone well for Connor Shaw, but there's going to be days like this right, where things don't go as smoothly as you hoped or wanted. And Steve Spurrier, hopefully, we don't know, but hopefully he's telling him just relax and take your time. Jacob Carter, the deep man, but another short punt. Takes a couple of South Carolina hops, but still Tennessee with decent field position on its 39-yard line after a 40-yard punt. Every month, thousands of people are switching to Buick's innovative technology, design, and luxury. How are they arriving at this decision? In Lexuses, Acuras, Hondas, Infinities, Toyotas, Nissan. If you don't know our luxurious new lineup, you don't know Buick. During the Buick sell-down, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus 1,000 on the best of remaining 2013 Buick LaCrosses. It's the taste you asked for, but never saw coming. Introducing the new Fiery Doritos Locos Tacos with a hint of lime and a lot of fire. Only a Taco Bell. Mine was earned orbiting the moon in 1971. Afghanistan in 2009. On the USS Saratoga in 1982. Once it's earned, USAA auto insurance is often handed down from generation to generation because it offers a superior level of protection and because USAA's commitment to serve current and former military members and their families is without equal. Begin your legacy. Get an auto insurance quote. USAA. We know what it means to serve. Red strawberry ale. Just what I was thinking. Fresh like a strawberry, brewed like an ale. New red strawberry ale. Before Mike could see his banking and investing accounts on one page, before he could easily transfer funds between the two in real time, before he could even think about planning for his daughter's future, Mike opened a Merrill Edge investment account and linked it to his Bank of America bank account to help free up plenty of time for the here and now. That's the wonder of streamlined connections. That's Merrill Edge and Bank of America. College football today. UCLA, Stanford, and Iowa, Ohio State. Well, last year, Antonio Richardson got the better of Jadavian Clowney, except for the final play. Richardson remembers this was pregame pointing at Clowney. Clowney has won the battle today, though. Clowney beat Richardson for a strip of the football, a sack force fumble that preserved the win last year. And uh, Clowney, so far in this ball game, 28 of 30 snaps played. And of the 28 snaps, he's been at right defensive end, every one of them. And he's got two and a half tackles for a loss. He had three through the first six games this season. And I don't think that's indicative of the way that he's played. He's a, he affects every single game he plays in. In fact, he affects every single snap that he plays in. Offenses have got to be uh, accounting for him on every play. Movement by everybody. Flags down. Full start, number 85, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Brian, you had a lot of people questioning Jadavian Clowney the last few weeks. After he decided to sit out the Kentucky game, he had the... Reaction by Steve Spurrier after the game where he backtracked later. He reiterated, reiterated to us this week when we spoke to Spurrier on the phone that, hey, we all handled it poorly. What he didn't say was, I handled it poorly, meaning the coach. He 
he, he should have. He continued to say that everybody handled it poorly. As Worley throws complete, but not much there on the gain as Downs makes the catch. Which he absolutely should have. I think, you know, Steve Spurrier, the thing that, that got me was when he said, if he wants to play, he can play. It wasn't that if he's able to play, he can play. And he was inferring that he may not have been injured and decided that he didn't want to play. Well, and in fact, we've now found out that the rib injury was not a bruise, but it was actually cartilage and a muscle issue, which is very difficult to play with. So I just felt like Steve Spurrier did not handle any part of that whole interaction. Run well. play on second and 14. And close to midfield, Marlon Lane. And looks like he's got a first down. Well, the combination of Rajon Neal and Marlon Lane now and this big offensive line, people forget this isn't just about Tiny Richardson and Jadavion Clowney. This offensive line with James Stone, Zach Fulton, Jawan James, all four of those guys up front will play on Sundays. This is probably the best offensive line in the SEC, and they're starting to exert their will. throw here. Clowney coming from behind. Worley's pass is pulled in. What a catch by true freshman Marquez North. Jimmy Legree, the corner, was bearing down on him. North's a big dude at 6'4", 220. Took the shot and hung on to the ball. Well, Jimmy Legree played that perfectly, and Justin Worley probably makes a mistake in throwing that out there, but Marquez North makes him right. 15-yard gain, back to the ground. Here's Lane, finding the lane. Nine on the play. Yard short of the first down, tackled by Bryson Williams. Again, South Carolina short two men in the secondary. Chaz Elder didn't make the trip because of a concussion. They lost to Dietrich's Marcus earlier in the game because of a targeting foul. Second and one. Neal, first down and more. Inside the 15. Tackled by Clowney at the 10. It's first and goal. A 16-yard run. Too many bad reads from the linebacker position. That time, Holloman out of position. Once Tennessee breaks the line of scrimmage and the defensive line for South Carolina, they have mismatches on the second level. Neal again. Dragged down. A touchdown saving tackle by T.J. Holloman. At the five-yard line, second and goal for Tennessee. And South Carolina fans know this has been a reoccurring problem all year. When they played Georgia, Todd Gurley got to the second level. It was lights out. They're having the same kind of problems at linebacker today. A walk-in touchdown for Rajon Lane. Tennessee dominated the line of scrimmage on that possession as Lane gets his eighth rushing touchdown. Or excuse me, Neal with his eighth rushing touchdown at 16 to 7 with the extra point coming from Pilardi. Seventeen seven. Neal already with more yards this year than all of last year, including five on this touchdown run. Got some good blocking off the right side from his guard, Fulton, and tackled James. Hader, Rajon Neal. I didn't know pink and silver looks good on you. Tasty chicken minis for breakfast. Here comes this white knight to save the islanders. I had total control to do whatever I wanted, and it was all a charade. What if I told you you have to fake it until you make it? ESPN Films presents a 30 for 30 film, Big Shot, Tuesday at 8 on ESPN.
For the first time ever, Toyota is announcing a hybrid sales event with unbelievable savings on every new Toyota hybrid, including Camry, Highlander, and Avalon Hybrid, plus the entire Prius family. And now you can get 0% financing on any new 2013 Prius, Prius B, or Prius C. Or you can lease this Prius C for just $189 a month. Plus, you get Toyota Care two-year maintenance. Don't miss the Toyota Hybrid Sales Event. Toyota, let's go places. We're tearing it up at Ray Smith's Chevrolet Buick. Our showroom is under construction to bring you a brand new car buying experience. And while we're at it, we're tearing up prices everywhere. Now's the time to get the best deals on all new Chevrolet or Buick cars and trucks only at Ray Smith Chevrolet. It's the best service and lowest prices around. Proudly serving you for over 50 years. Ray Smith's Chevrolet Buick in Camden. Tennessee trying to get its first conference win under Butch Jones and Rajon Neal's touchdown run caps a seven play 61 yard drive that featured no third downs only took two minutes and 25 seconds and Tennessee leads it now 17 to 7 South Carolina has won four in a row coming in with the loss last week to Georgia that opened things up in the SEC East you got Missouri playing Florida right now and leading the Gators. Vanderbilt is on top of Georgia and Tennessee leading South Carolina. The sun has come out here in Knoxville. And Pilardi will boot it away to Pharaoh Cooper. The returnable kickoff. Cooper on the three. The momentum shifting. Plays on offense, physical plays, special teams coming out and being physical. We talked about effort. And that's the, what Butch Jones has been preaching. The culture change has been built by Butch Jones around maximum effort. And they're certainly giving that effort from the first half. Connor Shaw, meanwhile, just two of eight passing. Mike Davis has 72 yards rushing. Shaw to the air. Nobody open. Shaw takes off and heads for the sideline. Let's check in with Tom down on the field. Well, Butch Jones told us all week long that they've got to try and challenge the conditioning of South Carolina. When the South Carolina Gamecocks come back on defense, take a look at the defensive linemen, including Jadavion Clowney. A lot of hands on the hips. They're dragging. The Tennessee tempo is taking its toll on the front seven of South Carolina, and that's exactly what Butch Jones wanted for his football team. goes to Bird and he's loose already one touchdown and maybe another touchdown was just saved on the ankle trip up at the 45 yard line still a 21 yard gain well Tennessee's playing man to man on the outside two on two and that's just a mismatch you've got Demir Bird on Cameron Sutton the true freshman and Cameron Sutton has not seen the kind of speed that he's seeing today from Demir Bird Jerron Tony there may have saved points as a bird, the track star, with that speed, might have been gone down the sideline. Shaw to throw again. And back across his body. It's nearly intercepted on the redirection off the hands of Nick Jones. And Tennessee continues to play zone coverage behind. Connor Shaw tries to get this ball back. He's very lucky that that wasn't intercepted. It's the old adage, thrown behind in the middle of the field late. Good things normally do not happen, but there's no reason why Tennessee needs to come out and play man-to-man -man coverage like they did when they, when Bird got that, that big play. Just play zones. It's been working well. Byron Moore was the man who got a hand on it for Tennessee after the deflection. Shaw with another pass play, and it's Davis out in space. Breaks a tackle. Another one and gets the first down. Let's go to Reese Davis in the studio. Dave, time for a Dr. Pepper 10 conference update. Vanderbilt and Georgia playing in Nashville. 
Vanderbilt had scored on a fake field goal. They tried another trick play. Chet Wiggins will have none of it. Pick six, dogs up 17-14 about halfway through the second quarter. Here it's a 10-point lead for Tennessee, but South Carolina in volunteer territory. Thanks to the passing of Connor Shaw, they're starting to get him in a rhythm. But a run play here for Davis. And it takes a couple of volunteers to get him down. McCullers at 6 8, 351, hit him first. But then you had A.J. Johnson in there as well. A gain of four on the play. Well, McCullers has got to, to be the guy up front for Tennessee that stops the inside run. It, it, he's their run stopper. He's such a big man. That time, a great job because if he gets by McCullers, Mike Davis may have scored. He's John Henderson 2.0. You remember when he was at Tennessee's at six feet seven inches tall. McCullough's got him by an inch. Here's Davis. Had a spin out of a tackle. Comes up just short of the first down. Tony on the tackle for the Vols. So third and short. We're inside four minutes to go in the first half. And Tennessee leads it by 10. Davis closing in on another 100 yard game. He's been over 100 yards in five of the six games played this year. Replacing Marcus Lattimore. Tennessee stacking the line of scrimmage here for third down in a yard. And Shaw easily gets the first down around the edge. That's a great read from Connor Shaw. This is a quarterback sneak around the left tight end. You don't see this very often, but that's just an audible and a feel that Connor Shaw has. He's such a good football player, has such good instincts. I'm not going to try to jam it in there when all the guys from Tennessee are in between the tackles. I'm just going to. Go out around the edge and pick up the first down. Two timeouts remaining. Three minutes to go in the half. High snap. Davis trying to pick a hole. It's not there. Stacked up at the 30-yard line. Daniel Hood has played very well so far. Starting defensive tackle from here in Knoxville. Led the pack that time on the stop. Tennessee that defensively has played so well beginning part of this game for us four times South Carolina go three and out with a punt They've given up a little bit of yardage on this drive But if they're able to, to get a stop here at least force a field goal attempt that would be a win in their book Another snap that was high and a design quarterback run for Shaw Pulled to the ground by A.J. Johnson after a gain of three, so third down coming up. It's a manageable third down situation, and they're close to the range of their true freshman kicker, Elliot Fry. They don't pick it up. His long in the season is 41 yards. And this is the situation where Connor Shaw's feet really demoralize his defenses. On third down, you have good coverage, and you don't keep your lanes. And he can get a first down with his feet. So the rush from Tennessee needs to be aware of him scrambling. Look at this four receiver bunch set to the bottom of your screen and a timeout called by Tennessee. I don't know if they had enough guys to cover that down here, and maybe that's why they called the timeout. Go to Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Dave, coming up on the Lexus halftime report, Missouri is undefeated and they have a lead on Florida. Everything falls right. The Tigers could have a two-game lead by the end of the day in the SEC East. One of the things that need to happen, they need Vanderbilt to beat Georgia. Dogs are having a whole lot of trouble. And a Corso pick to remember. Maybe you just want to see Corso do something crazy, or if you didn't like his pick, you want to see Bill Murray stomp him right in the gut. We'll show it to you at halftime. It was quite a scene, that's for sure, Reese. We were watching it here in Knoxville. Brian, take us to that last play yeah. in that formation. Tennessee dodged a bullet. They call a timeout. Here's all these guys over here, the tight end. They were going to release him up the field, and he was wide open after they snapped the ball. He lined up at the tackle position. Take a look. It was going to be an easy touchdown. Good timeout from Butch Jones preventing that play from going off. That's Mason Zandy, who also does play tackle, but he switches his number when he goes to tight end. So you're right. right. Lined up at the right tackle position, but as a tight end. And the worst part now is the play actually snaps, so you can't come back and run it because you've already shown it if you're Steve Spurrier. Ten-point Tennessee lead. Third 
third down and five. Close to the range of Elliott Fry. Again, Shaw checking. Time on the play clock here to 10. It'll be Davis, and he gets pinned to the ground. He was hit by Corey Miller. They're trying to rip the ball out, and so it's fourth down. That's an interesting call there from Steve Spurrier to come back and run an inside run on third and five when you've got a quarterback in Connor Shaw that can easily throw or run for the first down try to get him out on the edge where he has that dual option that was a missed opportunity and mark that time out in this game it could cost Carolina points true freshman Elliott Fry has not missed but he hasn't attempted very many field goals this would be a career long 45 yards way off short and wide to the left Tennessee holds and that's a seven point swing for Tennessee calling that timeout preventing that touchdown and then the short field goal mark this time in the game that's you know we always talk about few plays in a game few decisions in a game that really affect the outcome and that timeout from Butch Jones will certainly be one of them. Now, fans might point to Steve Spurrier there on the call. Is it possible that it was the quarterback who made the wrong decision there because he, he, he checked to that, didn't he? You saw him audibling at the line. It's hard to know uh, what happened there, but, I mean, if you're Steve Spurrier and you're given the option there, you got to live with the results, and that's a decision you make as a, as a head coach. There's Clowney again, and the ball is out. What a hit by Clowney. Tennessee jumped on it first. There was a Gamecock in there as well. Boy, that was a weird-looking play. They didn't even block Jadavion Clowney. Although we've seen that before. <laughs> Not a good uh, way to approach it. But Rajon Neal had no chance. South Carolina has the ball. The officials haven't signaled. They're looking for the ball. A South Carolina player's got it at the five-yard line. Chris Moody. The officials just realized the ball's not there. They got to make a decision, though, as to who had recovery. South Carolina came out of there with it. The ruling is the runner had the handoff and then pitched it forward toward the quarterback. It's an incomplete pass. Oh, wow. Second down. Was it really a pitch? Was that intentional? It was hard to tell whether the ball just came out or if he was trying to throw the ball. Tennessee trying to snap it quickly here. They're going to blow this dead. There's no way they can run this. They're going to call a timeout. South Carolina will. The problem is let's they take never, a look. Yeah, who, who recovered the ball? Well, let's take a look. Well, first... Second charge timeout, South Carolina. He's going timeout. down here, and he said, "Well, okay, he did he look did, like he was trying to pass the ball." He did try to ball. throw it. Yes, he did try to throw the ball back to Justin Worley. And what the official is ruling is that is a forward pass, which would be an incompletion. That was the ruling on the field. Now the question is, did that ball go forward? Yeah, it looked like it did. I don't think there's any question that it was considered a forward or a pass. Did it go forward right. or backward? forward so it's that's incomplete. certainly a forward pass I mean that's a boy that is a risky play by Rajon Neal but it turned out to be a very smart play it did look strange the way the ball came out he's definitely forced of pushing that ball back to Justin Worley so it doesn't matter who who came up with it on the bottom of the pile Weird looking play either way. So second down and 10 for Tennessee, just shy of its 30 yard line. 44 seconds left in the half. Balls will keep it on the ground. Out to the 31 yard line is Neal. That'll probably be probably be the final play of the half. South Carolina, which scored 52 points a week ago against Arkansas, held the seven in the first half today. Against the Tennessee defense, that's given up a lot of points. 59 against Oregon, 
34 against Georgia, 31 against Florida. South Carolina is going to call a timeout here to force Tennessee to make a decision where to, the, to run the ball or throw the ball here on third down and seven. Overall, assess this first half uh, for each team and what you've seen. Well, I think that Tennessee has come out and played with, with passion. They've come out and had energy. They've gotten the crowd into the game. South Carolina has kind of sleptwalked through the first the first half of this game outside of one player, Jadavian Clowney, who is, has really been in beast mode so far. He has taken over. But I think South Carolina has to, to wake up the rest of their players. And what did we say coming in? We, we did know which South Carolina team we would see. We, we right. watched the, the UCF game in person where they had the healthy lead. All of a sudden, they let the Knights back in the game. They, they've done that in other games. And then they have this complete game, this domination on both sides of the ball last week. But uh, it's been a struggle offensively, and they're having trouble stopping Tennessee's rushing attack, giving up 105 yards on the ground of the Vols today. And matching the tempo that the Vols have had on offense. They have been going as fast as possibly can, trying to test that conditioning for South Carolina, and they have not been up to the task so far. So Spurrier just used that timeout just to see what Tennessee would do, and they took a knee, and that's the end of the half. Uh, Jadavian Clowney certainly made his presence felt, but his team is trailing by 10. Here's Tom. Coach, field position not in your favor in the first half. Crowd noise, has that affected your game plan in the first two quarters? No, they're just out playing us. They're kicking our tails, and we hadn't played very well yet. Got one big play, uh, and I've called some bad plays down here at the end. So hopefully we can get some better plays in. All right, from an execution standpoint, what has to happen offensively to improve field position? Well, hopefully it's Connor staying there and throw the ball instead of running around all the time. And we just got to catch it and get some protection and, and then stop them. All right, thanks, Coach. Only four completions for Connor Shaw in that first half. It's 17-7 Tennessee. Time now for the Lexus Halftime Report. <laughs> Hi, Damien. How are you? <laughs> I, I, think, I think now we understand that regardless of how you think the little spat unfolded and everybody said we handled it poorly, it's pretty wise to say if Jadevian wants to play, we're going to let him play. And apparently, boy, did he come to play today. He's, he's kicking some rear end, Mark. Big time. Against Antonio Richardson, one of the top tackles supposedly coming in in the upcoming draft. And Todd McShay has him number four on his big board. But you look at these two players play, it's going to be a great battle the entire day. But Jadavian really got after it. I mean, this is the Jadavian County we expected to see from game one this year. An impact player making plays on the offense, <laughs> creating havoc, playing and play out. That's the Jadavian County I wanted to see because he's supposed to be the first player selected in the draft coming up. Here, nobody blocks him, but it's a terrific athletic play getting up the field to make the tackle here watch what he does here against the tackle and the tight end goes across their face right there makes a tackle in the backfield with an impact on the game that's a statement play right there to the offense that i'm here the werewolf is back i've come to play yes halloween's coming up but i'm going to be a little bit early and again jadavian Clowney, just spectacular athlete here on the double team strings it out between the guard and tackle plays the keyboard down the line of scrimmage gets the tackle for loss this is an impact player very impressive to watch you love to see players that are supposed to play at this high level play jadavian county came to play today he doubled his tackles for loss uh, total from the season in the first half of this game against tennessee and while he's played brilliantly the rest of the Gamecocks, with all due respect to Tennessee, who's played with their hair on fire. Well, he the Gamec just, Gamecocks haven't played well. He just showed all South Carolina's highlights the first half was Mrs. <laughs> Clowney. But you have, you have no doubt South Carolina's not playing well. They did not play well the first half against Central Florida. Remember, they were down. They came up the second half, ran the football, played physical. I think the same thing will happen to South Carolina today. They dropped passes, they missed passes, missed blocks, could not run the ball. It just wasn't a very effective performance. So 17-7 right now, South Carolina is trailing Tennessee. Can we continue a trend that started last week of unranked teams knocking off highly ranked ones? Had seven ranked teams lose last week, already had Louisville go down. Missouri's undefeated, taking on Florida. No James Franklin, Matty Mock, the new quarterback. Now, this is the first play from scrimmage showing they're going to let Mock throw it. Finds LaDamia Washington, and Cody Riggs came in from Florida, got ejected from the game. There's been three guys kicked out in the SEC, including Kadeep Marcus in our game that we're watching. Second play from scrimmage, wow. Mock the Bud Sasser for the touchdown. Missouri with a 13-3 lead. They are not yet at halftime in Columbia, and Florida's offense is hot garbage. I mean, it is awful. Aaron Murray and Georgia, they're in a fight with Vanderbilt right now. We'll show you how the dogs are doing when you come back. James Franklin got tricky.
This halftime report is presented by the all new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. Let me tell you something. If you took away the money, if you took away the fame, if you took away the lifestyle and all the flash, what would you have left? Everything. There will be more powerful storms. That's why there's new Duracell Quantum. Only Duracell Quantum has a high-density core. And that means more fuel, more power, more performance than the next leading brand. New Duracell Quantum. Trusted everywhere. Hey, guys. Hey. Glad y'all made it. Sorry we're late. Did you run into traffic? No. Just had to stop by the house to grab a few things. Mm. You stop by the house? Uh-huh. All right, whenever you get your stuff, run upstairs, get cleaned up for dinner. You leave the house in good shape? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Last-second field goal. Yeah, sure you did. Introducing AT&T Digital Life. Personalized home security and automation. Limited availability in select markets. Is that chicken on a pretzel bun? Pretzel bun? Um, it's Wendy's pretzel puff chicken. Oh, look what's on a pretzel bun now. Lightly breaded chicken, natural Munster cheese, honey mustard, and warm cheddar sauce. Wendy's new pretzel puff chicken. Now that's better. And now kids meals just $1.99 after four. Wait. I think you have the wrong guy here. Bill is talking, but the man with the neck tattoo is just not listening. There's been some kind of mistake. If only he was more like Bill's DirecTV. With DirecTV voice control, all Bill has to say is find romantic comedies, and there they are. Right now, Bill is looking forward to watching Love Actually and looking forward to blacking out soon. Search and record with just your voice. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. You know that guy that's got a ham radio in his basement? He can talk to China, Mongolia, and all the Koreas. And he eats Velveeta shells and cheese. So who are you calling amateur? Liquid gold. Eat like that guy you know. Welcome back to the Lexus Halftime Report. Georgia and Vanderbilt, dogs reeling, all the injuries coming off the loss to Missouri, but Aaron Murray had a chance to become the SEC's all-time leader in total offense. We wasn't worried about that when Jerron Seymour scored Mayday. Oh, nice job of weaving in between the defenders and picking in for the touchdown. But dogs would come back, Murray would answer, Georgia takes a 10-7 lead. Now Vanderbilt's about to kick a field goal. You know what you do when you're Vanderbilt, Lou? You have fun, you expect to win. We're not going to see the fake field goal they scored for a touchdown. Instead, we're going to see the fake that got picked off and run back for a touchdown by Shaq Wiggins of Georgia. Vanderbilt got the fake field goal touchdown, then Georgia the pick six. Austin Carter Samuels has been banged up. 17-14. Dogs have the lead. Now, Aaron Murray did pass Tim Tebow, and he's the SEC's all-time leader in total offense. Some pretty good company and a deserving name to have at the top. No, no doubt about it. But notice uh, what all four of those have in common. All Georgia and Florida. Nobody else. There you go. If Johnny Manziel played for four years, I would guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he Explode. might sneak in. I'm not sure he's going to be there. <laughs> the guy who mentored Johnny, Cliff Kingsbury, not wearing the deep V that he often does against West Virginia. Davis Webb to Jason Morrow. If you're a fan of the pro football, I like college better. But you're going to see Jason Morrow there. He's he's a big time, big time tight end, H-back tight. Kenny Williams getting the dump from Davis Webb, 41-yard gain. And in a tough place to play, you know, West Virginia has struggled. They built a 13-0 lead when Ryan Buston knocked through this field goal. But the Dana Holgerson squad scored 13 in a row late. They got the thing tied at halftime. They beat Oklahoma State. Tough to go to Morgantown. You never know. You never know. Oklahoma State and TCU. Mark, are you in favor of punt returners putting their heels on the 10 and never going backwards? Absolutely. Always? Yes. What if your name's Josh Stewart? You're wearing orange. You better have a lot of speed. Well, he's got that. And some great blockers. And, and a lot of nothing but field turf and opportunity. 95 yards. That's the longest punt return in Oklahoma State history. It couldn't be much further. 
could have been 99. Yeah, it could have been, yeah. but it wasn't, I think. Unbelievable. Baylor and Texas Tech, the only two undefeated teams in the back ten. Look at that. TCU. TCU does not look good. They're down 17-0 at the half. Jameis and Taj Boyd head-to-head -head and a lot of teammates on both sides. It's Florida State and Clemson square off. We'll look ahead when you come back. point of an EPA estimated 42 miles per gallon if the miles aren't interesting. The Lexus CT Hybrid. Lease the 2013 CT 200H for $299 a month for 27 months. See your Lexus dealer. Step aside. It's time to feed the coach. All right, okay, come coach. on. Let's get Challenge your friends at Cornhole and win some really great prizes. Visit hdcornhole.com. This is a map of the pressure points on my feet. I have flat feet. I learned where the stress was at the Dr. Schultz Foot Mapping Center. Then I got my number, which matched the custom fit orthotic inserts with the right support. Find a Walmart with a foot mapping center at drschultz.com. I'm a believer. Another beer? Sure. Give me a, um... Give me a Red's Apple Ale. Red's Apple Ale. Now also available in Strawberry. It's as simple as this. At BNY Mellon, our business is investments. Managing them. Moving them. Making them work. We oversee 20% of the world's financial assets, and that gives us scale and insight no one else has. Investment management combined with investment servicing. Bringing the power of investments to people's lives. Invested in the world. BNY Mellon. Right now at Friday's, get an entree like Jack Daniel's sirloin or our double glazed ribs and an appetizer for just 10 bucks. Seriously, this is 10 bucks. In here, it's always Friday. It's the cornerstone of athletic success, passed down from generation to generation, taught by example and learned by practice. It's how we respond to challenge and opportunity, how we celebrate victory and bounce back from defeat. On every field in the SEC, we play to win, but treat each other with respect. Sportsmanship. Own it, live it, pass it on. afraid for a second one or two things was going to happen when Bill Murray picked up Coach Corso. Either Coach was going to need a hip replacement or Bill was going to need hernia surgery. I didn't, I didn't know which. But Lee Corso picking Florida State, one of the more memorable picks, and we'll get to Florida State and Clemson coming up. But first, a game in the SEC, Auburn and Texas A&M. Last year, Texas A&M at 28 before Auburn had a first down. What happened here? <coughs> Auburn does a terrific job of running the ball the first in the SEC. Gus Malzahn's really changed this football team around. You've got Nick Marshall throwing the football. They run the ball as well as anybody in the country. But Johnny Mantel, the five touchdowns last year, last week carried his team to victory. This game's going to be closer than most people think. I like Auburn in the upset. Yeah, they can run, and A&M cannot stop the run. UCLA, one of the 13 unbeaten. Brett Hundley, Lou, says he's born to play in games like oh, this. Oh, I tell you what, the guy can throw the football I think UCLA's most explosive team this year. They're undefeated, playing exceptionally well defensively. I'll think, but you have to look at Stanford, how physical they are. And they have a receiver named Hamilton that nobody's been able to slow down. And Ty Montgomery scoring the touchdown there. He has been devastating. Florida State and Clemson. After Jameis wins his first game against Miami Mater Pittsburgh, Reese Davis put him in the Hall of Fame. After his fifth game, I agree with him. 17 <laughs> touchdown passes, two interceptions on the year, spreads the ball around, uses his tight ends very well. Nick O'Leary's got five touchdown receptions, but Todd Boyd has led his team to victory week in and week out. Big victories in his career and especially this year. Keep an eye on Sammy Watkins and this defense with Vic Beasley. 25 years ago, USC and Notre Dame was a match of highly ranked teams. 
Well, they talked about the Catholic convicts, but that wasn't quite accurate because not all our players were Catholic. However, that also, that, that also is why we don't play the game anymore. I'll go into that later. But I tell you, you just have to look at the talent that Notre Dame has as well. Tommy Reese, J.J. Uh, Jones, Daniels, et cetera. Tell you what, you better be careful. Coach O's handing out cookies. To linemen. Make like the it. linemen happy. Yeah. Tennessee's linemen are happy enough, at least when they don't have to look at Clowney. 17-7, <laughs> balls are up. Get ready for a lot more of that new plane smell. We're building the youngest, most modern fleet among the largest U.S. airlines to ensure that you're more comfortable and connected than ever. The new American is arriving. It's the taste you asked for, but never saw coming. Introducing the new Fiery Doritos Locos Tacos with a hint of lime and a lot of fire. Only a Taco Bell. Man comes with a state-of-the-art casing. Care for it with Dove Men Plus Care Body Wash. It protects man's skin from dryness as it cleans. Warning, without proper protection, damage will occur. Ooh. Dove Men Plus Care Body Wash. Skin care built in. The authority on the origins and composition of meteorites and scientist on the first spacecraft missions to Mars is one person, Dr. Hap McSween, distinguished professor at the University of Tennessee. A rock flying through space is also a specialty of Tennessee alum R.A. Dickey, big league knuckleballer and best-selling author. At UT, we appreciate and encourage unique and creative minds. The University of Tennessee, big orange, big ideas. Water, gal, Suni. Charter one lord, sure son of a gun. Tartar subdue, Two's eyes at zoe, the gang quiet. Why, Jan G, pew, sure pin linker, both fang. Why, she, Jan Young, boo one. Can you lancy hone you? <laughs> boo Young can, see moo la. You know what I'm saying? Get Charter Internet for only $29.99 per month. Charter, make way for more. For the first time ever, Toyota is announcing a hybrid sales event with unbelievable savings on every new Toyota hybrid, including Camry, Highlander, and Avalon Hybrid, plus the entire Prius family. And now you can get 0% financing on any new 2013 Prius, Prius V, or Prius C. Or you can lease this Prius C for just $189 a month, plus you get Toyota Care two-year maintenance. Don't miss the Toyota hybrid sales event. Toyota, let's go places. This halftime report is presented by the all new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. Eastern Michigan and Ohio, and Eastern Michigan playing with heavy hearts. Demarius Reed, their wide receiver, was found shot to death yesterday morning in an apparent robbery attempt. Still investigating that. This is the opening kickoff, and Tyler Allen of Eastern Michigan returns it for a touchdown. A lot of emotion on the Eagles' sideline. The last person to return a punt or a kickoff for a touchdown for Eastern Michigan was Demarius Reed, who did it in 2011. It's 21-13. Ohio has the lead. Second quarter. Second half coming from Knoxville. Jadavian Clowney has been dominant in the first half, but his team trails by 10. Could this be a signature win for the Vols and Butch Jones? success is overnight. It's about working harder and smarter. It's the culmination of a million decisions. It's where you see yourself going and how you choose to get there. The 2013 GS, our boldest response ever. There's no going back. Cheese at Zings are bold, like amazing game day fans. They're amazing. Amazing. No, oh, amazings. That's what I said. Amazing. You said amazing. Read my lips. Amazings, amazings, amazings. I can't read your lips. Kirk, it's not that hard. Get 
everything you need to prep your lawn this fall, like a Husqvarna backpack blower for just $249 at Lowe's. There will be more powerful storms. That's why there's new Duracell Quantum. Only Duracell Quantum is a high-density core, and that means more fuel, more power, more performance than the next leading brand. New Duracell Quantum, trusted everywhere. Applebee's doesn't just give you juicy steak. They top it off with sweet honey and a kick of cracked black pepper in their signature honey pepper sauce. And they top that top off with crispy fried jalapenos and onions. And to top the top of that top off, it's on their famous two for 20 menu. Applebee's new honey pepper sirloin. See you tomorrow. Lewis never smiles. Why won't he smile? the rainbow taste the rainbow generations of scholars have walked along these bricks educators innovators doctors entrepreneurs leaders who have called the university of south carolina home leaders who strive to shape our state and our world as gamecocks our leadership has no limits This is College Football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. Get your game day program here. And there's Clowney picking up the running back. Man, it's pulled in by Demir Bird. Facing pressure, end zone pass. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. Tennessee trying to beat a ranked team for the first time in 20 games. Going back to the win against South Carolina in 2009. This is their largest halftime lead against a ranked team since that game against the Gamecocks four years ago. How about Rajon Neal, Marlon Lane, and they're running in that first half. South Carolina gave up 104 yards on the ground to Tennessee. Yeah, and Butch Jones told us before the game that they really needed to establish some drives, and the running game has allowed them to do that. Rajon Neal and Marlon Lane have been able to get creases on the inside because of the linebackers for South Carolina. They have dealt with confusion all game, really all season, and there's been some great opportunities to run the ball on the inside because of them being out of position. This time Roberts comes on the outside. This is Holloman's play to make. He's got to get off blocks and make that play. They haven't been able to do that consistently enough to stop the running game for Tennessee. We'll see if they can do it in the second half. Jadavian Clowney was active in that first half with two and a half tackles for a loss. He also had a hit on Neal that was similar to the Michigan game in the Outback Bowl last year. Meanwhile, Connor Shaw, just four of 11 passing, 114 yards, going a touchdown, that 76-yard touchdown pass to Demir Bird. Here's Cooper on the return, and he runs into a teammate. That slowed him down, and then the balls get him to the ground at the 23-yard line. Time for our Discover Game Changer, brought to you by Discover Car. This guy used to changing games, and Clowney gave the balls fits in that first half with two and a half tackles for a loss, a couple of quarterback hurries. Yeah, he's the one guy on that defense that, that has come to play today, and shouldn't be any questions about his focus and attention to detail in this game. He has been uh, the one guy that's been disruptive on that defense. Only seven points at halftime after 52 in the win last week for the entire game against Arkansas. Well, they get Mike Davis involved here early. They have a fake with Connor Shaw running free downfield and a gain of about 15 and tack on 15 more because of a late hit on the sideline. Just a terrible decision by Ladero McNeil to come and try to take a shot. And it's just, it's not worth it. He's a true sophomore. 
young, but he got to know better. After the runner was out of bounds, personal foul, number 33 defense with a late hit. 15 yards from the end of the run, yeah. first down. Well, he and was four it, and feet it out of bounds. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how hard you hit him. He just barely brushes him. But the fact that he's two yards out of bounds, even if he just barely touched him, they're going to call that penalty. You just got to know that. Not a good way for Tennessee to start the second half. Give up a big run and a penalty on top of it. A total 32 yards, 17-yard run by Shaw, then the 15-yard penalty. From the Tennessee 45, Shaw to the air, in trouble. And Shaw throws into traffic where it's intercepted at the 27-yard line by true freshman Cameron Sutton. The first interception all year thrown by Connor Shaw. Shaw has made so many plays this year outside the pocket. He was trying to get that ball further downfield. Comes up a little bit short, and that's really the first mistake that he's made all season throwing the football. Second interception this season for Sutton. Well, the coaches say despite being a true freshman, is extremely mature. He's one of the leaders on the back end for Tennessee. So a takeaway by the balls. And they take over and run it on first down. Rajon Neal, look at Clowney trying to strip the ball. And Neal gets about six yards to the 33-yard line. And again, I expect up-tempo as fast as they can go for Tennessee. It worked for them in the first half. Butch Jones wants to get to the fourth quarter and test the conditioning of the defensive front for South Carolina. You wonder how that right thumb is for Justin Worley. Heard it in the first half. Seem to be okay after. Neal this time is down immediately. Marquise Roberts flashing. Takes him down for a negative play. Loss of a couple. And if you're South Carolina defensive coordinator Lorenzo Ward, I think you play man-to-man -man coverage exclusively in the second half. I think you get these linebackers involved in stopping the run, bringing some pressures and blitzes. You've got to do anything you can to stop Rajon Neal and force Justin Worley to beat you. Tennessee just one of seven on third down. Only 57 passing yards on the day for Worley. Worley with time and the pass way off the mark. Fourth down. Not sure who that was intended to. Bryson Williams, the safety, was in the area for South Carolina. They had a turnover in the first half, fumble from South Carolina, and Tennessee wasn't able to convert any points off of that. They went three and out, and now another turnover, interception, and again, Tennessee's offense three and out, unable to capitalize. A line drive kick by Polardi, Cooper under it. His 26 yard line slips a tackle. And a good play in the open field at the 33 yard line by Reeves Maben. 43 yard punt, short return. Connor Shaw's first interception of the season, but it doesn't hurt the Gamecocks. He ignored the naysayers and never compromised. When Thomas Edison threw the switch, it changed everything. Engineering without compromise. This is the Mazda way. And this is the Mazda CX-5. Skyactiv technology makes it lighter yet stronger, earning a top safety pick and more fuel efficient than any hybrid SUV. This is the uncompromised Mazda CX-5. What do you drive? Daddy, daddy, it's time for my princess show. <laughs> Mm. Fear of missing out on football can strike at any moment. Download NFL Mobile and get every touchdown on Sunday afternoons with NFL Red Zone from Verizon. Discover card. I want to ask you a couple of questions. I've got nothing to hide. My bill is due today and I haven't paid yet. You can pay up till midnight online or by phone the day it's due. Got a witness to verify that? Just you. You called me. Okay, that checks out. At Discover, we treat you like you'd treat you. Get the IT card with payment flexibility.
Easy control with your index finger. Learning from you. LG G2. I don't know how it happened, but it's okay. We're ready. When the things that matter most are on the line, make sure we are too. The fire and water cleanup team at 1-800-SERV-PRO. Like it never even happened. It's the cornerstone of athletic success. Passed down from generation to generation. Taught by example and learned by practice. It's how we respond to challenge and opportunity. How we celebrate victory and bounce back from defeat. On every field in the SEC, we play to win, but treat each other with respect. Sportsmanship. Own it, live it, pass it on. The chase for the Sprint Cup meets the big one at Talladega Super Speedway. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Talladega, presented by Five Hour Energy, Sunday at 1. Qualifying rained out at Talladega. And speaking of racing this week, Bristol Motor Speedway announced that there will be a battle at Bristol, a college football game in 2016 with Tennessee and Virginia Tech that will seat around 150,000 people. Is that all? <laughs> that's going to be really cool, man. I, that's going to be, uh, for Butch Jones, what a great uh, publicity opportunity and recruiting tool that he can use. And we were talking to him yesterday, and he's really fired up uh, not only about that, uh, but also playing Virginia Tech, which would be a great opponent. Whoever's calling that game might need a telescope with that <laughs> big of a venue. I can only imagine where the... Uh, Press box is to call the game from on first down with South Carolina getting its best starting field position. Mike Davis is wrapped up for a short game. Daniel Hood on the tackle. Let's look at our first half stats brought to you by Timberland. We talked about the rushing yards for Tennessee. 92 rushing yards for South Carolina, but half of those came on one play by Mike Davis. You heard Steve Spurrier at halftime tell Tom Luganville that he had some bad play calls late and their offense not good in the first half. Shot of the air in second and nine. Only four completions in the first half. Here's number five. It's Bird who has the lone touchdown. The ball is loose. It's picked up by Tennessee. They didn't rule him down, so it's volunteer ball. Randolph running with it. Now the officials blow it dead. Now the officials blow it dead at the 46-yard line. It'll be South Carolina ball. It took a while, though, for the officials to make that decision. Well, and typically they will do it. The runner was down. First down. Typically they will do it that way just so that if there is an opportunity for a return from a defense that they have that opportunity and they can always overturn it. I think that was a good call. Yep. He looked down there before the ball came out. Shaw stepping up. Slings it. Incomplete. Trying to hit Davis. Second and ten. Different approach on this series from Steve Spurrier. Come out three wides. Shotgun look and just throw the ball. No play action. Just three or four wide receivers out in the route. Wonder if that's the way that he's going to approach the remainder of this football game. Shaw to the sideline. And a leaping attempt by Burr, but he couldn't make the catch. It'll be third down and 10. You know, Brian, to add what you were saying about what they've decided to do, just come out, line up, and throw it. If you've noticed, on each and every one of the plays in this series for South Carolina, there's no check with me's. They're not changing plays at the line of scrimmage. They're just lining up and running their offense. And as a result, a lot more smooth, and they seem to be getting into a better rhythm. Steve Spurrier is one of those coaches that will make radical changes within the course of a football game, going from almost running exclusively to passing exclusively. He's one of the few coaches of college football to do that. Connor Shaw on a design run. Slammed down by Brent Brewer. The Tennessee coaches told us there'd be plays where Brewer would specifically spy on Shaw. You wonder if that's what they did there. It's fourth down. Yeah, absolutely. Brewer is going to come right here, and he's the guy that has enough speed to stay with Connor Shaw. He is the one that's a de converted defensive back, and as you mentioned, he will be dedicated to Connor Shaw in any kind of situation where he runs. How about this call here to go for it on fourth down and eight? 
They haven't converted third down and long, and they're going to try for a fourth and long. They're over for five on third and long. Here's fourth and eight. Shaw in trouble. Gets away from defenders and gets the first down to the 36-yard line. That's what Connor Shaw brings to the table. He just kills you with his feet. They had this well defense, putting pressure on the pocket, good coverage downfield. And Daniel Hood, the defensive lineman, number 97, he just doesn't have the lateral quickness or speed to get Connor Shaw on the ground. So first and 10. Here's Davis. And he's to the 30-yard line before he is stacked up. Look at him. He won't go down. He continues to splatter that pile. Corey Miller was there first. There's an injured Tennessee player. It's Daniel McCullers. We've seen a lot of SEC backs in person. Many of you have uh, studied on tape, Ryan. Where do you rank Mike Davis? Well, I think there's no back in the SEC, in my opinion, that's better than Mike Davis. T.J. Gurley is right on par with Todd him. Todd Gurley? Uh, sorry, Todd Gurley right on par with him. Uh, but I don't believe that some of the backs, Jeremy Hill, T.J. Yeldon, are any better than Mike Davis. Injury timeout back in a moment. I use it in my busy life. We use it to look and perform our best. We both use it at home. I trust Advocare. We trust Advocare. And you should too. I told you I'd do it, okay? Too good, too good, too good, too good, too good. Keep pedaling, keep pedaling, keep pedaling. Life insurance from New York Life can help your family keep good going. Day by day I'm making plans to get away. In the morning I'll be gone, in the morning I'll be gone. Stay to earn up to four times the Hilton Honors points at Hampton. Hurry into Red Lobster's Crab Fest with three entrees under $20. Like our new snow crab and crab butter shrimp, just $14.99. Only at Red Lobster, where we see food differently. Now try seven lunch choices at $7.99. Sandwiches, salads, and more. He ignored the naysayers and never compromised. When Thomas Edison threw the switch, it changed everything. Engineering without compromise. This is the Mazda way. And this is the Mazda CX-5. Skyactiv technology makes it lighter yet stronger, earning a top safety pick and more fuel efficient than any hybrid SUV. This is the uncompromised Mazda CX-5. What do you drive? ESPN College Football, brought to you by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. One of the great football traditions, the Ball Navy, a giant floating tailgate party on the Tennessee River right here next to Neyland Stadium. Steve Spurrier knows that tradition well. He's from Johnson City, Tennessee, about 90 miles from here, and he's coached now 23 games against Tennessee he joked this week he's coached more games in this stadium than many of Tennessee's head coaches he always loves to get a shot into the balls when he can going back to his <laughs> rivalry with Philip Fulmer endless supply of zingers for the balls from Steve Spurrier 14 and 8 in his career against Tennessee going back to his days at Florida as Davis gets the first down and second and three brought down by A.J. Johnson but they'll move the chains South Carolina comes into this game five and one three and one in SEC play and Spurrier and company not only still in the mix for the SEC championship obviously but this is asking a lot they can win out <laughs> still in the hunt for a national title oh come on if they can win out in the hunt here's a completion by Shaw 
And the catch by Nick Jones, somebody other than Bird, Davis, and Shaw with a touch. Those are the only three guys that had actually caught or carried the ball until that grab by Nick Jones. Yeah, they really need to get some other players involved. We have heard nothing of Ellington. We have heard nothing of Shaq Rowland, who had a drop earlier in the game. Two of their biggest players at the wide receiver position have not even made a play. Shaw going to the end zone. Incomplete. Rory Anderson turned on the Jets at the end. It looked initially like that was going to be overthrown. He got there and almost made the catch. Yeah, Rory Anderson can really run. Played man-to-man -man coverage. Nice job on the outside, but he got behind the defense there. It would have been a tough catch. Cameron Sutton got beat on the play. That ball's just a little bit short. Let your big tight end go up and make a play. Third down and six. Here's an option. And the pitch to Davis. To the 15. First down for Davis. Touchdown for Davis. The 10th rushing touchdown for Mike Davis. A 21-yard run. And when you get Mike Davis in the open field, you see why. He's one of the best backs, if not the best back in the SEC. The mix of power in between the tackles, but also the speed and the quickness on the outside. You just know a safety coming up trying to tackle him has very little chance of getting him on the ground. But the play of the drive was on fourth and eight where it looked like Connor Shaw was going to get sacked. He scrambled and got nine yards to move the chains. And then the touchdown run to cap the drive by Davis. And it's a three-point game after the point after. Mike Davis has been the bell cow for South Carolina so far this year. Get him on the edge, no chance. Football today, UCLA, Stanford, and Iowa, Ohio State. In the Outback, getting what you want comes with the territory. So back by popular demand, it's steak and lobster from Outback. Hurry in, because for a limited time, our chefs are searing up our award-winning signature sirloin just the way you like it, with a delicious, freshly steamed lobster tail. Your two favorites, served with your choice of side, all on one plate for just $14.99. Yep, looks like the tide came in. It's no rules, just right at Outback. Monday night, Adrian Peterson and the Vikings. They can run the football right down your throat. Eli Manning and the Giants. Touchdown! What a run! Two teams desperate for a win. Come on! Meet on Monday Night Football. Vikings, Giants. 825 Eastern on ESPN. It all comes down to Monday night. Smoke in the sky and fire in the air. Desire burns between them. Lead your way. Sing your song. Moving every day. No matter who you cheer for, we're all fans. Great tailgates start at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. For the first time ever, Toyota is announcing a hybrid sales event with unbelievable savings on every new Toyota hybrid, including Camry, Highlander, and Avalon Hybrid, plus the entire Prius family. And now you can get 0% financing on any new 2013 Prius, Prius V, or Prius C. Or you can lease this Prius C for just $189 a month. Plus you get Toyota Care two-year maintenance. Don't miss the Toyota hybrid sales event. Toyota, let's go places. South Carolina pulls within three with an electric move from Mike Davis. Brian Randolph doesn't know whether to go high or low, trying to think about how to hit him, and he got no chance with a shifty move like that. 215 pounds with his speed and long length speed, but then you put on top of that the shiftiness in the open field. That's a very dangerous combination 
for Mike Davis. He's got over 100 yards now, 116 to be exact. He leads the SEC in rushing. Six of his seven games played, he's over 100. And we talked with uh, Brian Randolph, who missed the tackle there yesterday, about whether to go high or low. He got no shot when the guy jukes you like that. Well, the problem is you're coming up trying to think, should I tackle him high? Well, he's got so many yards after contact. and I, Should I go low so he doesn't run me over? And then all of a sudden he gives you the shifty move and you got no shot. You saw Clowney imitating that <laughs> going to break as the kickoff sails through the end zone. It'll come out to the 25. Let's check with Reese. Dave, the reason you try to kick the ball through the end zone like that is we have Sports Center right now for, uh, brought to you by Bank of New York Mellon. This is the second half kickoff in the Missouri Florida game. Solomon Pat, 100 yards officially, went about 106. Gators only had 60 yards, a little over that of offense in the first half. Right now, it's a 13-10 game. You can see it on the Watch ESPN app. Maurice, Missouri 2-0 will host South Carolina a week from tonight on ESPN or ESPN2. Carolina's back within three. Tennessee with a first and 10 on its 25. Worley throws it into the flat. Incomplete. It's intended for Rajon Neal. Got to keep an eye on uh, Justin Worley and how well he throws the football throughout the remainder of this game. You, know, you get that bruise on that hand or your hand hit. And at halftime, you go in and, and you really have to focus on moving that so it doesn't swell up on you. Because if it does, it's hard to grip that ball. You see, he was lined up under center there. He will take the snap from center here. Going down it a few times since that injury. Neal trying to get outside. He's across the 30. And will come up just short of a first down. JT Surratt made the tackle. Well, as I'm standing here on the sideline looking at Justin Worley throw the football, he's gripping the football differently. He's palming the ball a little bit more, trying to aid his grip. And as, you, as a result, watch him throw it. He's almost aiming the football as opposed to just unleashing and throwing the football. Hurt his thumb on the helmet of Gerald Dixon on a follow through. See if they can uh, keep the uh, chains moving here. They're just one of eight on third down. The rare times we've seen a fullback in the game. Neil being patient, waiting for a hole to open up, and it does to give him the first down. And just the, yeah, right here you see the uh, helmet, his hand coming down on the helmet. You injure your thumb like that, and it's it's very difficult to grip that football. That's just. That happens. It's going to happen as you play play the quarterback position long enough. Guys are around you. You got to follow through to drive that ball down the field. And thankfully, he didn't get that thumb caught and hurt any of the ligaments. Seems like it was just a bruise. The umpire Casey Moreland went down. That's uh, the reason for the delay there. Here's Howard on a sweep, and he gets drilled, but bounces off of the tackler out to the 41-yard line. 5'8", 185 pounds, but fearless. Big Howard. Well, he's the guy that's got the most explosion on this Tennessee offense. As you see, Kelsey Quarles, our starting defensive tackle, come off. But Big Howard needs to touch the ball more. He's got the most explosion. He's like a, a bowling ball out there, very hard to get on the ground. And as you said, he has no fear going over the middle. In trouble at the 20 yard line is Neal. And they finally get him to the ground at the 42 for about a yard on the play. Well, Pick Howard uh, had a big game against Georgia with 70 receiving yards and 46 rushing yards, but trying to stretch out for a touchdown in overtime, he lost the ball. It was ruled touchdown on the field, but reversed by replay. The ball actually came out before it crossed the plane, went through the end zone and out of bounds, resulting in a touchback. Georgia won the game. You can see that Tennessee is building off of that. And Butch Jones told us yesterday he thinks his players are starting to really believe and buy into what he's teaching them in his first year here in Knoxville. Over the middle, he juggled and then pulled in by Jason Kroon. Just his ninth catch of the year, he's to the 35-yard line of South Carolina. There's a penalty flag down. Great design here. You see Kroon come across the line of scrimmage and Sherrod go lightly just doesn't play him close enough at the linebacker position. You've got to be on top of those guys 
and make that play. Kaiwan Lewis there as well. There is a late penalty flag thrown. Actually two markers one of the 37 one of the 44. That was a 23 yard catch. Jason Kroom. After the play they're fouls by both teams. Unsportsmanlike conduct number two offense. Unsportsmanlike conduct number 21 defense. Those fouls cancel. It's a first down. So you had Pig Howard and Marquise Roberts for Tennessee and South Carolina respectively. Longest play of the game for Tennessee 23 yards puts the ball at the South Carolina 35. Marlon Lane now in the game at tailback. Worley will throw instead. It's Howard and he's wrapped up by Bryson Williams. No gain maybe even a loss. Let's go to Reese. Dave showed you a moment ago how Florida had gotten back in the game. Missouri answered it, walked right back down the field, and on a big third and five, Gators don't even touch Henry Josie. Mizzou trying to go to 7 0. They're up by 10 in the third quarter. Coming off that huge win in Athens against a depleted Georgia team last week, it was AM last year that took the SEC by surprise. It's another newcomer in its second year in the conference, Missouri doing it in 2013. Worley's pass is pulled in. Johnson on the catch at the 29. It almost seems like Worley's been more sharp since the injury for whatever reason. Well, he's certainly, you can't question his toughness. He's got a hand, and now he's going to take a shot right up the middle, but delivers that ball on time. Sometimes you get a little gun shy when, you're, when your throwing hand has been injured. You won't follow through on that into a blitzing linebacker, but no, no problem there for Justin Worley. A couple of third down conversions already on this drive. Third down and four inside the 30 of South Carolina. Worley in the traffic, incomplete, trying to hit downs. There are three defenders around the football. So it's fourth and four. Your kicker certainly has the leg here. And Butch Jones electing to bring on Michael Pilardi, who is six of seven on the year, including a made 37 yard field goal earlier in this ball game. This will be. A 47 yard attempt. Actually, 46 officially on the field goal try. No good. Wide to the left. A good drive by Tennessee, but South Carolina able to hold them in the missed field goal. And it remains a three point Tennessee lead. Only the second miss of the year for Pilardi. South Carolina will have the ball down three when we come back. A normal incandescent bulb uses about $7 worth of energy per year. This Cree LED bulb uses about a buck. If you argue with math, you will lose. The Cree LED bulb. Need help keeping your digestive balance in sync? Try Align. It's the number one GE recommended probiotic that helps maintain digestive balance. Stay in the groove with Align. So we're making our way through the trees. Flying the chopper around the ocean. And I'm skidding on the arse. Missiles flying everywhere. Right as I'm about to shoot, this huge thing falls out of the sky like... <laughs> break into the room and start it. Don't fight it. Rated M for mature. Brian Greasy's favorite part of the program, the Affleck trivia question. Which former Tennessee player has the most Super Bowl rings with three? You and I and Tom Lugan were trying to figure this out last night. It was until this morning that we got the answer. Yes, it's a great question. And you got to think about, you know, obviously the teams over the past 20, 30 years that have won that many Super Bowls. I'm going to give you a hint, give everybody a hint. He was known for his special teams play. Great special teams player, but that's not that's not the only thing he did. Right. He definitely played. 
Mike Davis on first down. No running room. He's swallowed by McCullers for a loss on the play. All right, let's answer the athletic trivia question. Boy, they had to think fast, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and Bill Bates, Tennessee safety and a Super Bowl champion with the Cowboys in 92, 93, and 95. I used to love watching him run down and kickoffs and punts and some of the uh, explosive tackles he had were unbelievable. His son is a Tennessee volunteer commit. He's in Tom Luganville's ESPNU Top 300. Here's second and 11. And Shaw again gets out of there. Look at him go! All the way to the 41-yard line. You just Tennessee can't has not been able to stop him. Yeah, sorry, Dave. You just can't account for Connor Shaw. This is a pass all the way, and he just finds a lane. And despite the fact that Steve Spurrier at halftime said, I'd like to see Connor Shaw throw the ball rather than run out of there a little bit, I'm sure he's happy with yeah, that decision. He'll take that. That was a 29-yard scramble by Connor Shaw. On the 42 of Tennessee. Here's Shaw again. Dropped by Brewer, or is perhaps uh, spying him there. Gain of five, though, for Shaw on the ground. He averages 54 rushing yards per game. Connor Shaw, he's got 71 so far in this one. Yeah, and sometimes it's hard to call those design runs for Connor Shaw because he has struggled staying healthy with his shoulder. Last year, again, this year in the UCF game, he went out with that shoulder, and so. It's kind of a, it's one of the best things he does, but as a coach and a play caller, you want to protect him to make sure that he's healthy, and it's a fine line. And he's got some injuries, too, on the offensive line. Cody Waldrop, Ronald Patrick, both not in the ball game. That will sport at right guard. Shaw to the air, and wide open is Rory Anderson. A first down inside the 20. He hurbles a defender and steps out at the 12-yard line. That's a 25-yard gain. Well, Tennessee brought all three guys off the strong side. You're going to see it, and there's nobody left for Anderson. Four guys they brought. I've never seen a blitz like that before. It might have been a bust on the defensive side for Tennessee, but nobody takes Rory Anderson. That was easy. You might not see it again after that. <laughs> Ball on the 12. South Carolina looking to take the lead. going back to checking again at the line of scrimmage after they got that crowd noise down. Play clock is at three. Here's Davis. Cuts inside. And look at him. Push the pile to the one-yard line. Man, is he powerful at 215 pounds. We've seen him run over and run through Tennessee defenders on several occasions. First down and goal from the one. Look at the hit there. McNeil got the worst of that. Davis will lose yardage this time. A.J. Johnson firing through, makes the tackle. Penalty flag down, though. Tennessee didn't, wasn't able to substitute and get off the field in time. They get 12 men on the field. It'd be half the distance to the goal, which doesn't move the ball a whole lot. They're already Legal inside the line. 12 players on the field. The 12th player did not get off the field on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. Replay first down. Yeah, they're trying to substitute down there, get their bigger package with McCullers in, and those guys run at the bottom of the screen just didn't make it. It's a long way to run. Yeah. From that far hash mark, the ball is almost touching the uh, goal line on the snap, first and goal. Shaw on the quarterback sneak. Got in. Touchdown, South Carolina. And the Gamecocks have the lead. Yeah, He's in. Is there any question he got in there? And that drive, the last two drives, they have looked really easy for South Carolina. South Carolina on offense. They struggled so much in the first half. The difference in the second half has really been opening up Connor Shaw on the perimeter, getting him and his feet into this offense, and it's been very difficult to manage that 
and then you get the sledgehammer Mike Davis on the inside it's been a, a deadly combination in the second half. Third rushing touchdown for Shaw this year 14 for his career the extra point just sneaks inside the right upright as we go to Reese Davis in the studio. All right Dave Minnesota Northwestern Northwestern has really been struggling in this game. James Manuel the pick six for the Gophers three turnovers for Northwestern none for Minnesota seven point game by the way Jerry Kill is in the stadium up in the press box watching Tracy Clay's acting head coach. Now it's good to hear that uh, Coach Kill is at least uh, in attendance. Thanks Reese. That'd be a big win for Minnesota if they can hang on there at Evanston. Let's check in with Tom Loganville down on the field. The coaches on the defensive staff for Tennessee guys very frustrated because they can't get the attention of their players on the team and this is part of that learning process the growth process of how to forget the last play and move on to the next one. They've got to get the eyes to the sideline get the next call so they can execute the play. That's why you had guys coming off the field late. The team was not ready to play the next snap for Tennessee in Butch Jones and John Jancic the defensive coordinator giving this team an earful as they came to the sideline. Well, this is a South Carolina team we've seen do this before. They, they are able to turn it on. They did in the second half against UCF. Ended up dominating the second half. Knights made it close late. And the last drive for Tennessee was pretty good. It was 10 plays, about 50 yards, but then a missed field goal by Pilardi from 46. Well, we knew that that was a tall order for that defense from Tennessee coming into this game. So it's, it's not surprising that a little bit of trouble in the second half. And a little hesitation by Young. Now he elects to bring it up. Should not have. He gets hammered at the 11 yard line. Big game tonight on ABC. Saturday night football presented by Windows. It's Florida State and Clemson. Jameis Winston, Taj Boyd. How do you think Winston handles that environment? This will be like nothing he's seen, or at least a game that he's actually played in, Richard Freshman. You know, I, the one thing that stood out to me is his poise. And it doesn't seem like the stage uh, has been too big for him at any point this season. I know this is a much bigger stage. Uh, but, but the way that he's played, the way that he's reacted, the way he's become a leader so fast on that team, I think he'll be fine. Clemson so good at home especially at night as Clowney's in the backfield but he missed the tackle on Lane and then Lane is dropped they're going to give him forward progress to the six yard line cleaned up by Gerald Dixon but how about you David Clowney against the run in this ball game. There's certain ways you can block Jadavian Clowney. There's certain ways you can't. You can't pull a guard and try to kick him out. Take a look here at Zach Fulton trying to kick him out. That's just not, he's too fast. He gets in the backfield too quick to try to pull a guard from the offside to kick him out. Second down and 17. Lane wrapped up by Kelsey Quarles. Short game. It'll bring up third down and long. We talk so much about Clowney as a pass rusher but he's dominating from his position in the run game. And a lot of times elite pass rushers get questioned whether they play the run as well as they do the pass. I don't think there's any question with this guy. It doesn't matter whether it's run or pass. Let's all stop talking about the stats with Jadavion and Clowney. Football is not all about stats. It's about how you affect the game. Third and 16 and Worley. Oh it's dropped. That was right at the first down marker. Would have been maybe a yard short. Marquez North could not catch it. Went off his pad, so it's fourth down. And Tennessee will have to punt from its own end zone. Right. The last thing you wanted to do if you're Tennessee is have negative plays and give the ball right back to South Carolina, whose offense is like a hot knife through butter right now on Tennessee's defense. And Tennessee can't keep living on takeaways. And an interception. A fumble recovery as well. Down four. Minute and a half remaining here in the third quarter. Another short punt. Here's Cooper. Bounces off of one man. There are flags down. And Cooper tackled at the 37. But at least for Tennessee's sake, this uh, possession will start in Gamecock territory because of the South Carolina penalty. There were three flags.
During the return, illegal block in the back, number 30, return team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. All right, we love talking about Jadavion Clowney and, and about not being so reliant on statistics. He's got great statistics today. He's made some unbelievable plays, most of them in the running game, though, and these are the kinds of things that don't, people don't pay as much attention to as the sacks. But he's been having a lot of fun out there on the field today. And I, you got to feel good for him with all that's been said about him and, and the innuendo and whether he's committed and how tough he is. I think he's answered any and all of those questions today. And like you said earlier, it's against one of the best offensive lines yeah. in the SEC that he's dominating. A left tackle as well, and Antonio Richardson, who well, held him in check for most of the game last year. Some of those plays, to, to Tiny Richardson's credit, they're not even blocking him. They're trying to block him out with a guard coming from the weak side or with a tight end. They haven't really schemed him well for Tennessee. Mike Davis looking for a hole. Stood up. But again, he just powers to midfield. Gain of five. How many yards after contact for Mike Davis in this ball game? The one thing I, I worry about with Mike Davis is, is how many touches he gets on a week-to-week -week basis. It's very difficult in the SEC as the season goes on to be the only back in this offense that can shoulder the load. And right now we haven't seen a whole lot of Sean Carson at all in this game. And we wonder about the health of Mike Davis going forward. Brandon Wilds is still out. With an elbow injury, he's the backup. Another fumbled exchange, but a fortunate bounce right to Connor Shaw. Brought down by McCullers. Loss of a couple, so that'll make it third and long. Well, Clayton Stadnick, the center, just dribbled this ball back. It got because must have slipped out of his hands. Connor Shaw alert to just get that ball and get down. Huge third down for Tennessee's defense with all the momentum favoring South Carolina. Will be the final play of the third quarter. Flushed out of the pocket. Going to try to run for the first down. He's awfully close. They spot him right at the first down marker. Looks like he's got it at the 45. It is a first down for South Carolina. That quarter was all about Connor Shaw running the ball. It started with a fourth and eight where he picked up nine yards. And Shaw really a big factor on the ground. Threw his first interception, but it didn't cost him. South Carolina leads by four. A one-time deal, right? From Ridley Scott comes the film Empire Magazine says is a shocking, powerful, and transcendent thriller. Rolling Stone says expect the unexpected. Have you been bad? The Counselor. Rated R. Get red strawberry ale. Just what I was thinking. Fresh like a strawberry, brewed like an ale. New red strawberry ale. Airport, please. What airline? United. Which airline, sir? United. Oh, Kesson! Which airline, then? Uh, United. Why? Carolina? United. Nigga, Hong Kong, what's up? United. 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 More destinations than any other airline. United. That's great big world friendly. Go, go, go! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy, guys. Battle's over. We got our PlayStation 4s a while ago, got here early. There were like at least a million robots. We won, by the way. That's Dave. He's a crazy man. You should have been there. Play the future first. Grab a Taco Bell five buck box, and you could win a PlayStation 4 before it's released. Where are you guys from? He ignored the naysayers and never compromised. When Thomas Edison threw the switch, it changed everything. Engineering without compromise. This is the Mazda way. And this is the Mazda CX-5. Skyactive technology makes it lighter yet stronger, earning a top safety pick and more fuel efficient than any hybrid SUV. This is the uncompromised Mazda CX-5. 
What do you drive? Some sound. This is the best party ever. That is an understatement. So glad we finally got in. This place is banging. Hope it's cool we sit at the bar. The other tables look taken. Hey. I'm sorry, do we know you? Mmm, these are the best in town. Mmm, the ambiance is strange, but the food is incredible. This is our apartment. Our apartment. Oh. Weird name for a restaurant. More chips, please, waiter. Tostitos, Cantina, Chips, and Salsa. Real restaurant taste, wherever your party's at. The chase continues at Talladega. Tomorrow at 1 on ESPN. Presented by 5 Hour Energy. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Big conversion for Connor Shaw on that third down. Take a look at Jerron Tony. Had a chance to maybe knock him out of bounds before he got the first down, but you can't help but think about what Jerron Tony's thinking about there. The penalty that was assessed earlier in the game when they hit Connor Shaw laid out of bounds to Ladero McNeil. It's so hard to play defensive back these days, whether you can or can't hit a guy on the sideline, how you can hit a guy with a targeting rule, it's very difficult. And all the rules now are skewed to help these offenses score more points. South Carolina outscored Tennessee 14 0 in the third with 163 yards of total offense, 116 on the ground. That's Sean Carson in the game now at running back on first and 10, and Shaw will throw. Stepping up, throwing deep, single coverage down the sideline, and the pass is out of bounds. Intended for Nick Jones. Jed Shaw in that third quarter, run for nine yards and a fourth and eight, and he just ran for seven on third and seven to keep the chains moving. Tennessee has been unable to stop Shaw running the ball. They elected to take a shot on first down. If they go back to the ground, they're going to keep Carson in for Davis here on second and ten. Only seven completions for Connor Shaw on the day. Also threw his first interception in some 180 passes. A little roll up for Shaw. Everybody covered. And Shaw throws it away. So third down and 10. Do you agree with the play calling here to take a shot and then throw the ball on second down when you've been running the ball pretty easily against Tennessee? No matter what Steve Spurrier does in his offense, they have a great back like Marcus Lattimore or Mike Davis or a running quarterback like Connor Shaw. He is always, always, always going to want to play pitch and catch. <laughs> That's just who he is. And so it bothers him that Connor Shaw is 7 for 20 so far in this game. He wants to throw the ball, so I just don't think he can help himself in cases. Obviously, watch 14 here on the scramble if you're in orange. South Carolina has not converted in third and 10 or longer. Shaw rolling out. In trouble. And he's going to get taken down. The ball comes out. But they rule Shaw down, tackled by Marlon Walls. And so it's fourth down, and South Carolina is going to have to punt the football. That's a third sack for Tennessee today. Well, and this is whether you agree with the play call or not, and then he's definitely down, his elbow comes down there. I think that was a missed opportunity, only because you don't necessarily have to throw the ball 15 yards to get a first down on third and 10, but at least throw the ball underneath and get six, seven, eight yards, and at least allow yourself to attempt a field goal and make this a seven-point game. Tyler Hall will punt it away here on fourth and long. Another short kick and a fair catch made at the 17 yard line by Jacob Carter as we check in with Reese Davis in the studio. Dave, this is Michigan State and Purdue. Fourth quarter, only a 7 0 game, but the Spartans deep in the red zone. So they go to a little trickery. Tony Lippett, Andrew Gleifert, who is by himself. Antonio always has something like that in his back pocket. 14 0 Spartans. Who do you think right now is the best team in that division? Of the Big Ten. Oh, jeez. I mean, that's a <laughs> tough question. Right? You, it looked earlier really like it was Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Michigan Michigan State game will know a lot more. Uh, Michigan and Nebraska. You know, those three, I mean, it hasn't been pretty, that's for sure. <laughs> Ohio State clearly the, uh, the favorite in the Big Ten right now as Neal is knocked down at the point of attack by Sherrod Golightly. I think Tennessee is going to really ratchet up the pace here. 
try to get something some momentum back from South Carolina. Neal again and dragged down from behind by Holloman. So a loss of three. Now you're in an obvious passing situation here. Third down and 12. Well, this is where you really miss the mobility at the quarterback position. You run the zone read, the zone power, but you don't have the element to keep the defense honest with the legs of the quarterback like Connor Shaw provides for South Carolina. And the defense just tees off on the running back. And Tennessee, which ran the ball so well in the first half. Nothing on the ground here really in the second half. Now an empty set, third down and long. Here comes pressure, and Worley trying to run, breaks a tackle, and then dragged down, and a penalty marker is thrown on Quarles. He got the first down anyway, and now tack on 15 more for the face mask. Either wow. that or, or a horse collar tackle. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, number 99, defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Well, it never fails. I talk about Justin Worley not being able to move or run, and sure enough, he gets the first down with his legs. <laughs> Sharon Golightly came free, and Worley did just enough to get away from him and then tack on an extra 15 for Quarles. Well, that's big for Tennessee. He puts the ball on its 42-yard line. 12 and a half to go here in the fourth. Ball's trailed by four. Bad snap. Worley able to scoop, and then Neal gets nailed by Legree. And Neal shaken up on the play. These are the worst, the worst hits. And you don't see it coming, and they go low. And that's just that should be a penalty. You know that? That should be a penalty when when there's a defenseless player and they go right at the knee, just like you go at the head. So at some point you're saying you're almost going to have like yeah, a strike zone? Yeah, exactly. A hitting zone? I mean, that's what, that's what we have now is a, is a strike zone. A second down and 17. Time to throw. Whirly going deep. And the pass is pulled in. What a grab by true freshman Marquez North at the 16-yard line of South Carolina with Bryce and Williams defending. 48 yards. Look at this. This is why they're so excited about the true freshman. 6'4", goes up, he's strong. That's the thing that Mike Pajaki in the offensive corner likes most about North is his strength to the football. Marlon Lane, gang tackled at the 13-yard line, so two or three yards there. And, and I think they should do more of that, Dave, attacking this secondary. It's the weakness of South Carolina's team. And despite the fact that you don't have a whole lot of playmakers on offense, Marquez North is one of them. Throw the ball downfield, allow him to go up and make plays. Howard in motion, he'll get it on the handoff. One on one with the defender, and South Carolina able to get him down. Bryson Williams was there first for the Gamecocks. So that's a loss on the play of three yards. And that's a good play by Bryson Williams. They have been much maligned in reading and play, making those plays on the second level, but that time he diagnosed it perfectly and was not faked out. And brings up a big third and ten here where. Again, you have to account for Marquez North. He's he's hot right now. You might want to feed him the ball. Right up here at the top of the screen. Worley steps up, goes to the end zone, incomplete. There were three defenders and only two receivers there, so it's fourth down, and here comes the field goal team. And I don't, and I don't get that. I mean, you had Marquez North on the on the on the backside, completely free, is one on one with Victor Hampton, and you're going to throw this ball into four defenders, three defenders, and two wide receivers. And if the defender was looking for the ball, it was an interception. And anytime you have two receivers in one spot, it's a bust, right? You're never going to have two receivers in one spot, so not very well executed. Pilardi just missed a 46-yarder, but he comes back and nails a 33-yarder, and that pulls Tennessee within one.
ingeniously uses radar to alert you to possible collision threats. And in certain situations, it can apply the brakes. Introducing the all-new 2014 Chevrolet Impala with available crash imminent braking, always looking forward while watching your back. And recently, the 2013 Chevrolet Impala received the JD Power Award for highest ranked large car in initial quality. That's American ingenuity to find new roads. Oh, Pretzel bun. Yeah, awesome cheeseburger. No, it's not. It's not awesome? Oh, it's not a cheeseburger. Look what's on a pretzel bun now. Wendy's new pretzel pub chicken. Now that's better. What you have inside your phone says a lot about you. It's time the outside does too. Only AT&T lets you customize a Moto X that's designed by you. Choose colors, accents, and much more. Get it now for zero down, only at AT&T. Okay, ladies, grab a knee. I got somebody I want y'all to meet. He's a real leader. And he's gonna help us turn this thing around in the second half. Aflac. Aflac. Aflac, Aflac. Aflac, Aflac. Aflac! That's what I'm talking about! Aflac. Aflac. You feel me? Yeah! yeah. Bring it if you get sick or injured, we do everything we can to help you get back in the game. Aflac, an official partner of the Heisman Trophy. Be a lead, play Florida State football. We got a heck of a football team, and this ought to be a classic. Welcome to Death Valley. candidates all over the field. Tennessee trying to beat a ranked team for the first time in four years and get its first conference victory for new head coach Butch Jones. A touchdown run by Neal, a touchdown catch by Pig Howard. But can Tennessee stop Mike Davis? Over 100 yards for the fifth time this season. And South Carolina leads Tennessee by one. Just outside 10 minutes remaining. The second half, for the most part, dominated by South Carolina. But the defense for Tennessee got a big stop. And their drive aided by a penalty. And then Tennessee able to get a 33-yard field goal from Michael Pilardi to pull within one. Field position has been so important in this game. South Carolina's average starting field position has improved continually throughout the game. Now it's at the 22-yard line. They were backed up around their 15 in the first half most of the time. Cooper stutter step now takes it out. But across the 20 and across the 30. A penalty flag down. Cooper finally tackled in midfield, but this one's coming back. So instead of having field position in midfield, if this is on the Gamecocks, they'll have it around their 10-yard line. During the return, holding number 20, return team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of foul, first down. That's T.J. Gurley, number 20, right there in the middle of the screen. He's got a handful of jersey. Once that guy starts to fall down, that's, you get overextended, that's when the official sees it. Oh, for Tennessee, that's big. That's a, about a 40-yard difference in field position. We talked about the importance of field position. South Carolina backed up to its 11. That gets the crowd involved here. About 100,000 in Neyland Stadium. Dying for a conference win. Their last victory against the ranked team was versus the Gamecocks in 09. They've lost 19 in a row. Of course, just about every other game they play is against the ranked team in the SEC. Mike Davis gets the call. He's up to the 14-yard line. About three on the play. 
know, you got to stop Mike Davis or at least slow him down. But more importantly, in the second half, you can't lose sight of the perimeter runs from Connor Shaw. That's what's really started to open up this South Carolina offense. So if you're a Tennessee defense, you've got to have athletes on the perimeter like A.J. Johnson and Brewer that can run with Connor Shaw and keep him contained. 135 rushing yards for Davis. Sixth time in seven games this year. He's over 100. Shaw on the option will keep, and there was no running room. Good job backside by Corey Vereen, and that forced Shaw to just take a dive. He got a couple yards. And that's a great play by Tennessee's defense, understanding that you can't allow number 14 to beat you with his legs. Great containment. Nowhere for him to go. Bring up a big third and six. Now here in the rush lanes, Dave, when you want to rush the quarterback, if they're going to throw it on third and six, you've got to make sure that you have lane integrity. What that means is don't allow Connor Shaw a big opening in the middle of the formation to run for a first down. Shaw steps up. Nowhere to go. He's sacked. Vereen was there for Tennessee, forcing a punt. They finally get to him. I don't know that they had lane integrity, though. Connor Shaw held on this ball a little bit too long. He could have run right there and made a first down. Instead, he holds on to it too long, and Vereen gets him from behind, and they get a turnover on downs. Had a chance to flip the field. The punting has not been good today. Tyler Hall will kick it from around his three, and Jacob Carter waits for it at his 43-yard line. Eight minutes to go. South Carolina leading by one. With Missouri winning a, a second loss as there's a penalty flag down. Boy, if this is on Tennessee, it appears to be on South Carolina. From Tennessee, it would have been first down. Delay. Another delay again, probably. That's three delay game penalties. On South Carolina, I was saying if South Carolina gets a second loss with the way Missouri's playing, even though they meet next week, it's going to be awfully hard for Steve Spurrier and company to win the East. Already a loss to Georgia. And Georgia is winning against Vanderbilt, trying to go to 4-1 in league play. So now punting from the end zone. Okay. Tennessee will have it at the 35-yard line. A miserable kick. 23 yards. Love drama? Be honest when you're asked to be honest. Be honest. Actually, we love your brother more. A lot more. Yeah. Hate drama? Go to Cars.com. Our side-by-side -side comparison tool helps you get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive. No drama. You've got to love the weekend. It's like everyone came together and said, if it's good, let's save it for the weekend. So here's to the KFC 10 buck weekend bucket. 10 pieces, 10 bucks. Any way you want it. Just 10 bucks every Saturday and Sunday. Today tastes so good. Never more. Have you ever heard me? Oh, oh, oh. Perfect work of art, I knew right from the start. I was in here for you. We made to love. All new 2014 Chevrolet Impala. Made to love. We're tearing it up at Ray Smith's Chevrolet Buick. Our showroom is under construction to bring you a brand new car buying experience. And while we're at it, we're tearing up prices everywhere. Now's the time to get the best deals on all new Chevrolet or Buick cars and trucks only at Ray Smith Chevrolet. It's the best service and lowest prices around. Proudly serving you for over 50 years. Ray Smith Chevrolet Buick in Camden. Water gal Suni. Charter one lord, sure son of a gun. Tartar Sadube. Two's eyes at Zoe to gang quiet. Why Jan G? Pew, sure pin linker both fang. Why she Jan Young Boo one? Can you Lancy hone you? <laughs> Boo Young Kang? See Moo La. You know what I'm saying? Get Charter Internet for only $29.99 per month. Charter, make way for more. 
ESPN College Football is presented by Cars.com. Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And in part by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Butch Jones recognizing the momentum shift in favor of his volunteers after a 23-yard punt. Ball at the 35. We'll see if Jadavian Clowney can win the game for his team like he did last year, forcing a fumble late in the game on Tennessee. He's lined up at left defensive end. He's only been on the sideline for three plays. This is his 61st play. And they're going to run it inside. Neal, who's back in the game after getting shaken up on the last drive, picks up five yards to the 30. Well, it'll be interesting to see whether Tennessee continues in their hurry-up offense. Look like they will. If I were Tennessee, I would try to take as much time off of the clock in this drive as I can. I want to score points. I'm already in field goal range, but I want to take as much time off the clock as I possibly can. Although from this spot, they missed a field goal earlier this half, a 46-yard attempt missed by Pilardi. got back on side. Neal running away from Clowney. Brought down short of the first down. There's a penalty marker down on the far side of the field. Gerald Dixon on the tackle for South Carolina. See what the flag is for here. Clowney jumped, but it appeared that he got back on side. Here the tackle for Tennessee. Why don't you just come up out of your stance when, when he goes into the neutral zone? You should. Personal foul. It'll go hands to the face, number 74 offense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. That's on Antonio Richardson, the left tackle. Uh, right here. They're out of field goal range now. And you see it there. He's got the face mask of the defender. And it's Dixon who still made the tackle. That's a big penalty because they were going to be content keeping the ball on the ground and using their big offensive line to, to plow down there in field goal range. Now you got to think about throwing the football. He's definitely an emotional player, Richardson. Fifth penalty on Tennessee. Second down and 20, and Worley to the air. Here comes Clowney, and Worley throws it to the South Carolina bench. He wanted no part of that when Clowney got off his block. It's third down and 20. Yeah, well, I, I just don't get it. I don't know why you're going to try to block the best player in college football with a tight end. And, and there you go. You got the tight end. He's trying to block him down. There's no chance. And, and Worley knows it. And so the play is dead before it even starts. It's just not, that's not sound football. They try to catch him off guard and maybe run the ball in this situation. Here, you got to get 20 yards. And you don't have to get 20 yards. You need to get about 10 to 15 yards or at least give yourself a chance to kick a field goal. Worley. Pocket collapsing around him, and down he goes. Sacked by Kelsey Quarles. So he'll have to punt the ball at the 49-yard line of Tennessee with six and a half remaining, and South Carolina leading by one. You got to take a you got to take a shot. Sometimes you got to pull the trigger. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Three guys running downfield. You got to pull it. You got to throw that football. I know it didn't look open, but give your guys a chance to make a great play to win the game. And that's what Lugs was talking about. This team learning how to win. In those situations, you've got to find a way to make a play. And that time they didn't do it. Blown opportunity. Pilardi's been pretty good as a punter, and Farrell Cooper's had some trouble receiving the punts. This is going to take a bounce and a Tennessee hop. Be down at the 12. It'll be South Carolina ball inside six minutes to go when we come back to Knoxville. Ingeniously uses radar to alert you to possible collision threats. And in certain situations, it can apply the brakes. Introducing the all-new 2014 Chevrolet Impala with available crash imminent braking, always looking forward while watching your back. And recently, the 2013 Chevrolet Impala received the J.D. Power Award for highest-ranked large car in initial quality. That's American ingenuity to find new roads. There will be more powerful storms. That's why there's new Duracell Quantum. Only Duracell Quantum has a high-density core. And that means more fuel, more power, more performance than the next leading brand. New Duracell Quantum. Trusted everywhere. 
Are you settling for the same old, same old? Or are you making it the original with Pizza Hut's $10 any pizza deal? Any pizza, any size, any toppings. Delivery, dine in, or carry out. Just ask for or use promo code 10 any. We all have a choice. Make it great. A restaurant meal is over $10.50 per meal. A restaurant quality dinner from Bertoli costs $5 a serving. Replacing one restaurant dinner a week saves your family of four over $1,000 a year. Save money. Live better. Walmart. You know that guy that's got a ham radio in his basement? He can talk to China, Mongolia, and all the Koreas. And he eats Velveeta shells and cheese. So who are you calling amateur? Liquid gold. Eat like that guy you know. Today, Pac-12 rivals collide. Sophomore sensation Fred Huntley leads the unbeaten Bruins as Kevin Hogan and the Cardinal look to rebound. While Braxton Miller and the Buckeyes aim to keep the nation's longest win streak alive as they take on the Hawkeyes. College football today, UCLA Stanford and Iowa Ohio State, 3.30 Eastern on ABC or ESPN2. College football lives here. Vikings, Giants, 825 Eastern on ESPN. The most storied conference in college athletics will live on a new network. Tradition has found a new home, the SEC Network. Launching August 2014, go to getsecnetwork.com. A one-point game here in Knoxville. After Tennessee goes backwards, was in field goal range, but a penalty and then a sack forced a punt. Now Connor Shaw in South Carolina with possession at the 12-yard line, 544 on the clock. Carolina trying to get to four and one in the SEC as Shaw goes to dump it off and throw it too wide of Davis incomplete as we check in with Reese. All right, Dave, Florida, Missouri Gators trying to get back in it. Freshman running back Kelvin Taylor going to get it and score his first career touchdown. He's just 30 touchdowns behind his old man Fred on the all-time list. Mizzou's added another field goal, though. It's 26-17, still early in the fourth quarter. They're looking to go to 3-0. and They host South Carolina in Columbia next Saturday night. ESPN or ESPN2. Here's second and 10. Shaw steps up. Down he goes. Wrapped up by Walls. Boy, he's had a day. Walls saying the ball came out, but they will Shaw down. And that's a loss on the play. And Shaw is hurt. Oh, boy. Holding the left knee. We did the game against UCF where he went out with a shoulder injury and came back the next week. He's a tough kid. He's have to gonna, he's gonna have to come out for at least one play here. Oh, he went down awkward. Went down awkward there with his legs caught underneath him. They do have a veteran though in Dylan Thompson who will come in and replace him right now. Surprise, you're having triplets. Surprise, your house was built on an ancient burial ground. Surprise, your car needs a new transmission. How about no more surprises? Now you can get all the online trading tools you need without any surprise fees. It's not rocket science, it's just common sense. From TD Ameritrade. Let's go apple picking, she says. On a Sunday. Isn't this fun? Mm. Fight fear of missing out on football. Download NFL Mobile. Get coverage of every NFL game exclusively from Verizon. Another beer? Sure. Give me a, um... Give me a Red's Apple Ale. Red's Apple Ale. Now also available in Strawberry. I'm a cheap bungee cord. This guy bought me at the gas station. Perfect for holding down the lid on a box of sweaters. With 800 pounds of tailgating gear. Nah. And if you have cut rate insurance, the biggest hit of the day could be to your wallet. So get an Allstate agent. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. Are you in good hands? Easy, guys. 
guys. Battle's over. We got our PlayStation 4s a while ago, got here early. There were like at least a million robots. We won, by the way. That's Dave. He's a crazy man. You should have been there. Play the future first. Grab a Taco Bell five buck box and you could win a PlayStation 4 before it's released. Where are you guys from? In this meeting last year, we saw the devastating Marcus Lattimore injury. Watch the left leg of Connor Shaw. It appeared that, the, that he was down before the ball came out, but he was holding his left knee in pain and went to the sideline with help. Oh, that's just an awful sight. Awful sight there. And all you know, when you go down like that, your legs underneath you and you have two guys on top of you. It's the weight of three people coming down on that left knee of Connor Shaw. Dylan Thompson comes in cold, but he has to win 50 passes this year. He'll go underneath on third and 13. And there'll be a punt. Davis on the catch, tackled immediately, and Tennessee will get the ball back with about five minutes to go. Thompson did win a couple games for him last year, including against their rival Clemson. He threw ten touchdowns and two picks last year. Two touchdowns, two picks this year. We'll see if it's Thompson on the field the next time South Carolina gets it. Boy, right now quarterback situation in the SEC East, right, with James Franklin out from Missouri. Connor Shaw here, Florida with Jeff Driscoll. And it's tough playing in the SEC quarterback position. Paul, who shanked the last punt, gets a better one off here and tackled immediately as Carter. 40 yard punt, no return. Tennessee ball on its 45 with four and a half left. Coming up in about 10 minutes, ABC or ESPN2, you'll see UCLA and Stanford, also Ohio State. Looking to keep the nation's longest win streak alive, taking on Iowa. Stanford trying to bounce back after the loss at Utah. If you haven't seen Brett Hundley play for UCLA, he is one of the top quarterbacks in the country. Of course, Braxton Miller for Ohio State likewise. So Tennessee ball down one. And possession at the 45-yard line of South Carolina. They've got Clowney lined up at left defensive end. Worley pulls it back and throws to Howard out in the flat. Makes the first guy miss. And knocked down in Carolina territory at the 48, a seven-yard gain. Marquise Roberts on the stop. Good decision by Justin Worley. Get the ball in the hands of Big Howard. He is the guy that can make people miss on the perimeter. No need to be in a hurry here. Take your time. You've got plenty of time. Timeouts to burn. Lane hit, and down he goes at the line of scrimmage. Kelsey Quarles was there first, and then Jordan Diggs got him to the ground. So a loss of a yard on the play. Now it's third and four. Are you in four-down territory here with 3.48 left? Yeah, three timeouts. Why do you always go to four-down territory when they can get on third down here? Let's focus on third down. Well, the guy just <laughs> lost two yards on... Get the ball to Pig Howard here second on third and down two. slot. Howard in motion. Worley. And that is knocked down beautifully by Mod Christian, who was covering Marquez North. Are you in four down territory? <laughs> <laughs> now we can talk about that. Yes, you are in four down territory, I think. They're going to punt. Oh, boy. Well, you got three timeouts, 324 left. I think I'm with you. I'd go for it here. Well, they, their, their starting quarterback just went out. You got a quarterback that came off the bench cold. I know that they have a lot of confidence in Dylan Thompson, but maybe that plays into the decision of Butch Jones. Put the ball in the hand of a cold quarterback, see if you can get a three and out. But even if you don't get it here, you, you put it in his hand, although they can get 20 yards and get a field goal and then make you score a touchdown. And not a good punt. Not what you were hoping for there. South Carolina will have the ball at the 18-yard line. Tom? Well, Connor Shaw, as of right now, it's being determined he has a left knee strain. They're going to put ice on it. As of this point, they're not going to take him into the locker room, but he will not return to this ball game. So now it's time for Dylan Thompson to manage this offense for South Carolina. A junior from Boiling Springs, South Carolina, who we mentioned, won two starts last year, but you hate to see Connor Shaw, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, not able to try to win the game for his team late. But Thompson is experienced. He's a confident quarterback. Coming into the season, there were many that thought he was actually a better passer than Connor Shaw, though Shaw's had a really good year throwing the ball. 
Bucks not what they need right now. They don't need a passer. They need somebody to come in and eat up clock with Mike Davis on the ground. Tennessee expecting that. Here comes Davis and doesn't get much on first down. Maybe two to the 20-yard line. Tennessee. And tackled there. Clock nearing three minutes to go. Maybe a timeout here by Tennessee that will leave the balls with two. Uh, you just hope that this isn't the uh, kind of injury that ends the season and potentially the career for Connor Shaw. He's had such a huge impact for this South Carolina team over the last couple of years, and, and it's hard to, to see a guy go out like that, a guy that's going to be, well, before he got hurt, was going to be one, the winningest quarterback in, mm -hmm. in South Carolina history. It's a tough way to, tough way to go out. Let's look at the other side. What, what, even if Tennessee loses this game, what does this see, uh, say about the direction the balls are heading under, under Butch Jones? Well, I think Butch Jones has been a great hire for Tennessee. I think he brings an attitude. I think he brings a level of confidence. He's very accomplished in the prior stops that he's been at Cincinnati and Central Michigan. I think that they still have a lot of work to do. They still have a lot, as he would say, bricks to build this back, uh, this program back. And, uh, but certainly the way that they've played today has inspired the fans here. Now the question is, can they finish and learn how to win? Second down and eight. They'll keep it on the ground with Davis. And oh, McCullers beats him up at the 21. They've been waiting for him to make a play like that for four years. That was huge. Third down and long. <laughs> really, he eats him up? <laughs> He's 6'8", 350. The other guy's 5'9", 215. I think that was a good way to describe it. <laughs> well, you certainly can't block McCullers with one guy. And give him credit. Played off the backside and brings up a huge third down and eight. So now what? You've got one timeout left. There's 3.04 on the clock. Keeping in mind that it is Steve Spurrier, you know, he wants to throw. Do you, do you take a chance here of allowing Tennessee to maintain a timeout if you don't get the first down or you don't get a complete pass? Or, or do you try to run the ball, and if you don't get it, you force Tennessee to use that final timeout? You know, what I know about Steve Spurrier is he wants to win the game on offense. I don't think he's worried about burning up a last timeout for Tennessee. He wants to get a first down and then win the game on offense. It'll have to be Dylan Thompson. Getting it done. He will throw here. Rolling out. Well, he's going to take off and run. And unable to pull a Connor Shaw. He's tackled short of the first down by Miller. So Tennessee will use its final timeout. And South Carolina will be forced to punt with 2.55 left. Tennessee led this game at halftime 17 to 7. Big Howard had a touchdown catch. In the first half, Rajon Neal, untouched, five-yard run. Mike Davis, a couple of big runs. That was a 21-yard touchdown. He's got 137 rushing yards, leads the SEC in that category. Then the left knee injury to Connor Shaw, replaced by Dylan Thompson. And now fourth down and two for the Gamecocks. A one-point lead over Tennessee. And uh, don't forget the last time that South Carolina punted the ball with Tyler Hull, it was a shank. And so what's going through his mind uh, right here in this situation where they need to pin, try to pin Tennessee back and make him go the length of the field. And of course, Jadavian Clowney will take the field and like last year against Tennessee, look to try to preserve the victory by getting to the quarterback, getting ahead, forced to fumble on Tyler Gray last year that was recovered and South Carolina hung on. First things first, how about this decision? South Carolina has the offense on the field with a one-point lead on fourth and two at its 26-yard line with a backup quarterback in the game. Are they just going to try to draw Tennessee offside? Bruce Burrier calls a timeout, maybe just wanted to see how Tennessee would line up. Looked like the Vols were ready for it, actually. Steve Spurrier just like trying to trick you there, trick, <laughs> trick everybody in this stadium. I just wanted to take a look, see you, how they were going to line up to my formation. What if he comes back and they go for it? I, I think that would be a big mistake. <laughs> but, you know, I, I wouldn't put anything past Steve Spurrier. 
He's got one of the best backs in, in college football in Mike Davis, but uh, the play here is to punt the football and make a young quarterback in Justin Worley make the plays to beat you. Tennessee out of timeouts, two left for South Carolina. If Missouri hangs on, by the way, 3-0 will be the Tigers' record. That would mean Florida would have two losses. South Carolina trying to get to 4-1 before going to Columbia next week. The Georgia-Vanderbilt game is not over yet. Georgia leading by three as South Carolina puts the offense on the field again. There you go. Never boring with the ball, Coach. Will they call another timeout? He's standing next to the official, and here it comes. <laughs> He's icing himself. Either trying to A, see where and how uh, Tennessee would line up, or B, see if he could get him to jump to get the automatic first down. Well, he's not even giving Dylan Thompson a chance to get into his cadence, so it's not that. I think he wanted to see how the defense was going to line up to his formation, and if there was something that he really liked, he may have run it. How are you see seeing things from down there, Tom? I'm standing right next to Dylan Thompson right now and watching him walk towards me coming off the sideline. He was chuckling, uh, almost laughing of sorts, as if they were just tinkering with Tennessee's defense. I really believe they were trying to get the look they wanted based off of personnel grouping and formation. And if they could count numbers, they were legitimately thinking of it. And now I think, uh, obviously, Steve Spurrier's got his senses back. Well, I think the South Carolina fans are thankful to see Tyler Hall run out there right now and punt the ball. No doubt. Jacob Carter trots out for Tennessee to field the kick. As you mentioned, been a rough day for the punter. Can he get off a good one here? Almost got it blocked. Line drive kick. And fair catch made at the 35-yard line by Carter. 39-yard punt. Tennessee's out of timeouts. Two minutes and 48 seconds remaining. They need a field goal. And their kicker, Michael Pilardi's career long is 52. So he has a leg. Made a 37-yarder and a 33-yarder today and missed from 46. Those of you expecting to see Oklahoma, Kansas on ESPN, it will start when we're done. Right now, it's on ESPN Classic. If I'm Butch Jones in that huddle right now, I'm telling Justin Worley, I'm telling everybody in that offense, we don't need to be in as big a hurry as you might think. I know we don't have any timeouts. All we need is a field goal. There's plenty of time with two minutes and 48 seconds and a clock stoppage with each first down to move down the field. And left tackle against right defensive end. We talked about it in the open. Richardson against Clowney. Worley throws it this side, incomplete. Trying to hit Jason Kroom. But second down and 10, Jimmy Legree had coverage. And you hear it time and time again, the most important part in the two-minute drill is to get something positive on the first couple of plays. Gets a little bit of momentum. Once you get later in the drive, the defensive line, you get a little bit more gas, and the pass rush is not as much a factor, but you got to get something positive on first and second down. It's Lane instead of Neal. Right now at running back, Worley will throw again. And towards the sideline, well overthrown. Again going for Kroom. Now it's third down and ten. But he had Kroom open, just uh, threw that ball a little bit too high. And if you're Butch Jones, Mike Bajakian, offensive coordinator, Call some plays where he can throw the ball short and let guys run. Get the ball to Pig Howard in the slot. He's your most explosive wide receiver. Now you're going to have Clowney walking around the middle of the field. Don't know where he's going to blitz. Third down and ten. Tennessee down one. Here he comes. Worley gets the pass away down the field. And a one-handed grab. It's North again. First down, Tennessee. How did he catch this football? With one hand is how he caught it up against his face mask and his chest. Big time play and a big time moment. Undoubtedly a Sports Center top 10 opportunity there. 39 yard pass play. There's an injured South Carolina player back at the 32 yard line. So the clock is stopped now. It's Kelsey Quarles. Remember the last time Tennessee was down here in field goal range and went backwards with a penalty and then a sack. Look at this grab. Wow. Not only did he catch it, but the defender Christian had his hand right on the ball. We talked with the coaches again about Marquis North, and they said the biggest strength he has 
is his ability to go up and get the ball his strength in his hands 6'4", 215 pounds and as a true freshman he is making his mark early for Tennessee. He ran a double move on the outside there on Christian which was a long developing play Christian played it absolutely perfectly. That's just a play it's hard to defend when you have a player the size of North. So as they look at Kelsey Quarles how do you handle this from a strategy standpoint of your Tennessee out of timeouts plenty of time 223 on the clock ball at the 26. It would be about a 43 yard field goal from here as we mentioned Pilardi missed from 46 earlier his long this year is 44. Honestly with what happened against Georgia a couple weeks ago you you want to take all of the uh, chance of, of not going not going well and you want to take that out of the equation you want to try to score a touchdown here to end the game now you want to do it in a smart fashion okay. All right, we'll, uh, we'll get back to that. Let's check in with Reese in the studio. All right, Dave, we're waiting on the start of Oklahoma, Kansas. As soon as you guys finish a potential major upset there, we'll get you out to Lawrence. They're just about to kick off. If you want to see Oklahoma, Kansas, you can tune over to ESPN Classic or use your Watch ESPN app. That's maximum college football all the time with that Watch ESPN app. They are underway. Sooners coming off that loss to Texas will have it first. It's on Classic right now. And also you got Missouri leading late if, if they win could be a two game lead before for the day is over for Missouri in the SEC East as you look at Michael Pilardi the place kicker for Tennessee a senior who is career long is 52 uh, long this season of 44 but as you said Brian again Tennessee would love to win the game absolutely with a touchdown absolutely and not have any time on the clock when they do it. If South Carolina gets the ball back with time on the clock, they have one timeout. They'll keep it on the ground with Lane. Wrapped up at the 21 after a gain of close to five. Sky Moore on the tackle. But if Tennessee wants any time, they can throw the ball on the bubble screen to Pig Howard because it's man to man coverage. South Carolina is selling out because they know that Tennessee's going to want to run the ball in between the tackles. All they need to do is flip it out to Howard, who's one of the most difficult wide receivers to tackle on the perimeter. Got to keep an eye, obviously, on number 7-2. For South Carolina here, if you drop back to throw. Here's second and five. They'll keep it on the ground. Lane bouncing off the tackler. Gets the first down to the 15. That'll stop the clock as they reset the ball. Remember, Steve Spurrier used those two timeouts on fourth down. So they can't, other than one timeout here, they won't be able to stop the clock to try to get the ball back if Tennessee just wants to take time off the clock here and give the place kicker a shot with 10 seconds left. That's a great point. And, and when you use those and you try to be too cute to look at a formation to play around and think about a fake it's going to come back to bite you. Run the play clock wind down here game clock inside of a minute lane tackled for a loss on the play by Chaz Sutton and Tennessee out of timeouts about a 15 second difference between the play and game clocks. So maybe they spike it here. They let the play clock wind down, spike it, and try the field goal on third down. They run. It's Lane inside the 10. First and goal for Tennessee. The clock will stop until they reset the ball. 27 seconds left. If you're South Carolina, do you let them score? No. They wind the clock. Will they take the play clock down and spike it? That's exactly what he's going to do. Yeah, he's going to take it down, spike it, and then the field goal unit will come on. And it basically becomes an extra point. Can't have a penalty now inside 10 seconds. And he spikes it with three. Remember, inside three, you can't spike it anymore. That was close. That was close, absolutely. But you, 
Remember that ruling. That ruling is you can't take a snap under three, spike right, it. Right. But but with a running clock, you can. Well, as soon as you can spike it with one second, all you need to have is one second. So Pilardi on to try to win the game. A 19-yard field goal for the upset. And South Carolina will use its final timeout. And and boy, you couldn't. Uh, you couldn't have used the three timeouts if you're Steve Spurrier any worse in this fourth quarter. And I know that hindsight is 2020, but he will uh, he will look back and probably think that he would have approached it differently. That's for sure. How about the angle here? It's a short kick, but a, a tough angle for Pilardi. Sometimes there's more pressure on these shorter kicks. Right? Yeah, well, in this case, in a lot of a lot of cases, when you're inside, I used to hold for field goals, and we were inside the 10-yard line on a hash. We would actually take one of the tackles from the left side, in this case, on the left hash, from the left side of the formation and bring him over to the right side because it is such a severe angle, and you want to block uh, the angle to where you're going to kick the football. Let's see if Tennessee does that here. But the angle is severe. Tyler Drummer is the holder. Pilardi to win it for Tennessee. Ball is down. The kick is good. Tennessee wins it. Devastating loss for Steve Spurrier in South Carolina. Jubilation for the Vols. Their first win in their last 20 games against the ranked team. Their first win over a top 15 team since 07. And it's Butch Jones' first SEC win. Good hold, good kick. No question about that for Pilardi. And Butch Jones has his signature win in his first year at Tennessee. And able to bounce back after the tough Georgia loss two weeks ago. And you got to wonder what's going through the mind of Steve Spurrier, the way that he managed the end of the game. Butch Jones now with Tom. Coach, you're going through a process here. Whether you want to call it an identity change or a culture change, what does this mean about your team learning how to win today? Two weeks ago, we woke up that we could win. And to win a game like this, our kids have been resilient. They've bought in, and it's another brick in the process. What a great win. Our kids have been resilient. I'm happy for our seniors and for all of all nation. What would you say about the leadership of this football team today? The ebbs and flows, poor field position at times, but they hung in there. This was the inch game. Inches make the champion, and we were searching for those inches. We thought our conditioning would be a factor. We talked about mental toughness, and our kids hung in there, and we found a way to win a football game. Congratulations, Coach. Go enjoy it. Thank you. South Carolina falls to Tennessee 23 21 on a Pilardi 19 yard field goal as time expires. They're celebrating in Neyland Stadium. So long from Knoxville. Tennessee wins it 23 21. Welcome everyone to Lawrence, Kansas. I'm Mark Jones along with Brock Hewer, Kaylee Hartung down in the field. Kansas taking on Oklahoma.